Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is people. P-E-O-P-L-E. Really? You bet your life! It's Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, a comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood and brought to you with more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers. The dealers who have on display the outstanding DeSoto Automatic with fully automatic power flight transmission and the all-new Plymouth, your best buy in the low-priced field. And now, here he is, the one, the only... That's me. Here I am again with $1,000 for one of our couples. We have some young single people for you tonight, Rajo. For me? Well, uh, for you to talk to. Oh. Uh, Miss Virginia Harbin and Mr. Chuck Wallace. So, folks, would you come in, please, and meet Rajo Marks. Well, welcome, youngsters, for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day, I presume. Virginia Harbin, that's you, huh? That's right. Are you uh, married? No, I'm not, Rajo. Are you engaged? No, I'm not. Are you over 21? Yes, I am. Chuck Wallace? That's correct, sir. Oh, how old are you, Chucky boy? I'm 31, Groucho. 31? Well, say, you're a pretty young-looking kid for 31. How tall are you, Chuck? Five foot six. Mm-hmm. That must be why they call you Chuck, isn't it? Because you're short for Charles? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Virginia, let's get back to you. What, what sort of work do you do? I'm an employment interviewer at the Bureau of Occupations at UCLA. Oh, what do you what do you do at this place? I try to find work for college students. Uh-huh. We try to match the employer's requests with the uh, students' requests as to the type of jobs that they're particularly interested in doing. That doesn't seem uh, plausible. Huh? <laughs> I does. never heard of a college student that was interested in work. <laughs> <laughs> How about salary? I should imagine college students are pretty practical. What do they want to start with? Fifty thousand a year and free parking? No. I... <laughs> I don't think so, Groucho. I think that they're really more interested in the job and the opportunities that the job has to offer more so than uh, than the salary. Is that so? In other words, you don't think they're interested in money? And you expect an employee to hire a netwit like that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that they, they really are interested in the money, but I think, too, that they're interested in the opportunities that the to job meet the has boss to offer. And, uh, Yes. And the other people who work in the office, the male ones, I mean. Where do you work, Chuck? I work at the Flamingo Hotel in Las Vegas. Oh, you work in Vegas? Yeah, that's right. No wonder you're short. (laughs) (laughs) I go up there occasionally. I've stayed at the Flamingo, and last time I was there, I stayed at the Desert Inn. They have a golf course there. What is your job at the Flamingo? Are you the little fellow under the roulette wheel that makes it stop in the wrong number? <laughs> no, I'm the masseur there. Masseur? Oh, you're a Frenchman. Well, uh, good evening, monsieur. <laughs> monsieur, what do you do in this place, uh, monsieur? Well, I give the steam bath, the rubs, and the oxygen there. You give the oxygen? Is That's this after right. they play or before? <laughs> <laughs> Well, have you always been a masseur up there? No, I was a lifeguard before that, Gotcha. That's kind of a strange job in Vegas, isn't it? When a man jumps in the pool up there, the last thing he wants to be is saved. <laughs> is it pretty Is it uh, pretty hard work, Chuck? Uh, no, it's uh, fun. The lifeguard? Mm-hmm. That's right. In fact, uh, you dive after pennies like they do in Hawaii? Well, in a way, yes. There was a rumor going around the hotel that... Uh, there were a number of them when I was there. <laughs> <laughs> And he threw me out of the hotel. <laughs> well, anyway, there. this rumor was that uh, if anyone would throw a silver dollar into the pool before they'd uh, go into the tables, well, they'd have good luck that night. And uh, How does a rumor like that ever get started? I started it. <laughs> well, congratulations. Thank you. Finally found somebody who was crooked than I was. <laughs> yeah. Well, Vegas is certainly a fabulous place. Are there any more little traditions like that one about... Throwing the coins in the water? Well, there's a, uh, a rumor going around the Flamingo now that uh, if you come down to the health club and get a rub and give the boy a silver dollar to rub your arm, you'll have a... That's you, huh? Well, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr. Wallace, I hope you won't be offended by this, but my guess is you're about as straightforward and honest as a Las Vegas slot machine. <laughs> 
Well, you make an interesting and attractive couple, and I'd like to go on talking to you, but now it's time to play You Bet Your Life. You st- we start you off with a $100 bankroll. This is right up your alley, isn't it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which you try to bill as high as possible. Each time you miss a question, you lose half of what you have. You can quit whenever you like. Is that clear? Yeah. Okay, let's see how much money you can make. You selected music. And remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. $50. Okay, uh, $50. What musical instrument does Vladimir Horowitz play? Talk it over. Your partners. And if you don't know, get. Do you have any idea? Yeah. Take a guess. Violin? No, you're close. It's a piano. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty close. They're next to each other in the audience. <laughs> well, you lost half your bankroll. You still have $50. Now, what do you want to try? Mm-hmm. 60, 80, 10? Okay, whatever you say. Forty dollars. A few years ago, a famous clarinetist had such men in his band as Gene Krupa, Harry James, and Lionel Hampton. He was known as the King of Swing. Who is he? Artie Goodman. Mm-hmm. Goodman. One answer. Benny Goodman. Mm-hmm. Oh, Artie Goodman. Oh, Artie Goodman. I guess you're right. Go ahead. I think it was Benny Goodman. Oh, you just nose under the wire. That's right. Well, you now have ninety dollars. Chucky, maybe you better let her answer. Yeah, I, uh, I think you're right there, Ralph. This girl goes to UCLA. Now uh-huh. you have ninety dollars. Now what do you want to try? Should we try seventy? Seventy dollars. Seventy. The orchestra will play a familiar song. You tell me the name of it. Play, Mister Meekin. <laughs> We'll now climb to one hundred and sixty dollars. Shall we try the ninety? The ninety is right off the boat. We just got it in today. Good. <laughs> Good. Try the ninety. 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 Wow. The orchestra will play a song by Cole Porter. You identify it, Jack. <laughs> Just that? one of those things. That's right. Once again. Just one of those things. That makes three of those things. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> And you wind up with two hundred and fifty dollars. Well, thanks and good luck from the Desoto Plymouth dealers. And I Thank hope you. you're very happy to get it. George, it's time for a commercial. Not just any commercial, but the one about that beautiful, tremendous new Desoto Coronado. So say something. Well, I don't have to, Groucho, because this car speaks for itself. It's a real honey, sleek, glamorous, and new. The DeSoto Coronado is a 170-horsepower beauty with a Sierra beige top and a Cadiz blue body that's just the greatest. And the Coronado's got a new chrome and stainless steel setup that makes it look even longer and lower, if that's possible. Yes, this Coronado is a real work of art. And to prove it, we put the name on the rear fender in shiny chrome. Up front is the famous Fire Dome name, proof that the Coronado offers the same unbeatable performance as all the other DeSoto automatics. Inside, this car is like nothing you've ever seen. It's so beautiful. The cream seat bolsters are the finest top-grain leathers, a perfect blend with the pale blue of the weave pattern corded nylon upholstery. George, that car is so lovely. I wonder if it's doing anything after the show. Well, Groucho, I hope it has a date. A date with a lot of those nice people out there. A date at their DeSoto Plymouth dealer showroom to see for themselves that the beautiful DeSoto Coronado is another proof that DeSoto puts you ahead. Automatically. Remember the dealer who sells the stunning DeSoto Automatic also sells the high style Plymouth. George, let's have the next couple. Who are they? We have some people with interesting stories, Groucho. Mrs. Tommy Lewis and Mr. Peter George Stathis. Would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx? Welcome, folks, for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Mr. Peter George Stathis and Mrs. Tommy Lewis. Mrs. Lewis, you're a woman. I'll start with you. What's your first name? Tommy. Tommy? Is that a man's name? Nothing to start with I.E. Really? I didn't know that. Next time I see somebody with an I.E., I'll make sure and tip my hat. (laughs) Where are you from, Tommy? I'm originally from Pasco, Washington. Where? Pasco, Washington. Pasco, Washington? That's Mm -hmm. in the apple country, isn't it? Near there, yes. Mm -hmm. I was up there once, but they threw me out. They figured one bad apple could wreck the entire industry. <laughs> Are you married, Tommy? Yes, I'm married. Where did you meet your husband? 
I met my husband, Douglas Aircraft. Douglas Aircraft? That's right. What were you doing there? I was a riveter, and he was a tool crib attendant. You were Rosie the Riveter, then? No, I was Tommy the Riveter. <laughs> well, Rosie is I.E., isn't it? Yes. <laughs> we're back to the I.E. again. What was he doing in the tool crib? Was he just a baby at the time? Or? No, he was the attendant. He uh, gave out the motors and guns and, and the uh, equipment to work with. So the, the employees had to go to the tool crib and get the equipment to work with. Well, we seldom have an opportunity to explore romance in the riveting section. <laughs> and I always like to do research on any subject. Uh, how did your husband break the ice the first time he saw you? He did. not I did. Uh, he re- I went up to the tool crib and I asked him if he had a high-speed motor with a loose chuck. <laughs> he said he had the motor. You're lucky he didn't call a policeman, eh? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> what is a high-speed motor with a loose chuck? Well, a high-speed motor is a 1,500 uh, RPM motor. And That's uh, revolutions per minute, isn't yes. it? Yes. And it's... Uh, That's what they're having in Puerto Rico. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, a loose chuck is one you spin down to fit the, the, the um, drill with your fingers instead of taking your chuck and keep the key and keep turning it like this by hand and mm-hmm. making your arm tie it. So I'm on the high-speed motor with a loose chuck. And, uh, well, is that how they make chuck steak? Do they shoot at it with a gun? No, I think that's a different subject. That ends with I.E. too, you know. Oh. Chucky. Yeah. I thought we were, we were past that deal now. We may never get past that. Oh. <laughs> Your name is Peter George Stathis? Yes, Gracho. Well, you're a very cute-looking uh, George Stathis. Well, thank you. I didn't mean to uh, ignore you for such a long... I was of... wondering... I wasn't really ignoring you. I was merely occupied with a ricochet romance. <laughs> Can you sing that song, uh, Tommy? No, but I don't sing. I play on the black notes and play on the white notes, but I always sing in the track. <laughs> well, I have no answer for that. No. <laughs> what, what sort of work do you do, Peter? I'm a restaurateur. Uh, a restaurateur, huh? Yes, sir. Really? I've been arrested many a time. Do <laughs> you have frog's legs? Sir? Yes, sir. Let's see them, huh? <laughs> well, that would be. <laughs> well, Pete, you look like you're a pretty good advertisement for your place. What are your measurements, by the way? Well, I measure five, in, uh, five feet five inches, and I weigh 210 pounds. Is that strip for Jim? Yes, sir. Well, you're a fine figure of a man, Pete. I do. My advice is stay out of dark alleys. You'd certainly be an easy man to roll. <laughs> Where are you from, Peter? Originally, I mean. I was born in Greece, oh. in the island of Kithera. Kithera. Huh? How is it so many Greeks are good restaurant operators? Is it just a coincidence? Or because well, they happen to be experts on Greece. Well, <laughs> well Gracho is like this. That's an old joke, uh, you know. Every Greek boy is born with a spattle and a spoon on his hand. A spattle? What kind? A whiskey spattle? No. <laughs> it's the one that you stir a stew or a soup or oh. anything that you want to make in a deep casserole. Well, let's talk about your place, Pete. Uh, where is it? Well, uh, my place is located at 701 East Ocean Boulevard in Long Beach. No. Oh. The seafood grotto. And if you really want to enjoy the finest seafood, you better come down or call Long Beach 76748 <laughs> and you'll have the finest seafood you ever had any place. Well, I'll, I'll give you a ring. Suppose a halibut uh, answers. Do I hang on? <laughs> How do you feel about uh, seafood, Tommy? I don't like it. Fish tastes too much like fish. Fine partner, I have. <laughs> <laughs> Why I choose you? <laughs> well, my advice is, after that, don't eat at Pete's place, huh? You're liable to get a Mickey in your mackerel. <laughs> well, you're a very entertaining couple, and it's been real nice talking to you two, and now let's play your bet your life. In the race for the $1,000, the first couple won $250, and the secret word is people. Now, let's see how much money you can make. You select the sports. And remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. What do you want to start with? That's about fifty dollars. Fifty dollars. That's a nice compromise. What do you call the last runner on a relay team? Talk That's over. the yeah. anchor man. Yeah, you're right. It's the anchor man. But in the future, <laughs> give me one. Anchor. That's the 
Yes, you may have a different way. Wonderful. Yeah, and you're you, a pretty uh, smart cookie, then, huh? You now have $150. Now, uh, what question do you want, Pete? Mm-hmm. Let me have it. Well, you can have an 80, a 10, a 100, 30, anything 60. Let's advance it 10 more. Okay. That all right with you, Tom? Is that all right, Tommy? What do you call the area a football player aims for when he tries to kick the ball out of bounds near the goal line? One answer now. Oh, no. That's a coffin corner. That is right. It's a coffin corner. Your bankroll is now $210. Now you can quit or you can go ahead. Let's take a chance. What do you want? What question? Uh, $70. $70. What do you call the basic rules and provisions of modern boxing? The rules of, uh, uh, Logsbury rules is something of that type. The Queensbury rules. That's right, the Queensbury <laughs> The markers of Queensbury rules. Well, you were That's fighting right. whether we had to give it to you. And you now have $280. Are you a gambler? Well, let's gamble on it. Okay. Big one or a little one? Let's have $80. $80. How many players on an ice hockey team? On an ice hockey team? Mm-hmm. Five. Mm-hmm. Oh, that no. Six. 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 Oh, we Too bad. One. Well, you've lost half your bankroll. You wind up with $140. Well, thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth Dealer. Sorry Thank I didn't you. win. Thank Thank you. You. Who's next, George? Well, Roger, we have a housewife and a married man for you. They volunteered just before we went on the air. Mrs. Capitola Fredrickson and Mr. John Blake, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx? Welcome, folks, for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealer. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. You're John Blake, eh? It's yes, spelled right. J-O-N. Why yeah. is that? Did somebody knock the H out of you? Uh, no, Groucho. It's just a contraction of the early English Jonathan. Oh, I see. Uh, where are you from, uh, Jonathan? The Washington Heights uh, section of New York City. Oh, really? I used to live up there. Mm-hmm. 165th Street and um, Amsterdam, man. Around there. Mm-hmm. How old are you? It was about 100 years ago. I'm 27, Groucho. 27. Oh, mm-hmm. you're a fine-looking lad. Mrs. Uh, Capitola Fredrickson, eh? Fredrickson? Fredrickson. That's you. Uh, where are you from? Uh... Well, I was born on an Indian reservation in Red Lake, Minnesota. Oh, really? Yes, I was. You're not wearing your feathers tonight, huh? What tribe are you from? I'm from the Chippewa tribe. Chippewa? Yes. Is that your Indian name, Capitola? No, that isn't an Indian name, Groucho. My Indian name is Celine Janat Ozawandib Dabusanakudo Kinu. I don't know, but I'd be willing to try. <laughs> well, what does your name mean in English? You fish on your side, I fish on my side, nobody fish in the middle? <laughs> no. It means a girl with the dark brown hair flowing outwards under low clouds with a little eagle. That's not easy, either. <laughs> what sort of work does your husband do, Capitola? Oh, he works in the post office, Groucho. Oh, does he ever play post office with you? Uh... Well, sometimes. <laughs> what does he do in the post office? Well, he calls himself a post office, I mean a... Um... Postmaster? No, post office mortician. <laughs> he works in, well, he works in the dead letter department. <laughs> That's his little joke, huh? Yes. While he's clowning around the post office, the mail order electric belt I sent for to give me the strength of Hercules is rotting in the basement. <laughs> Come to cut out those jokes. Where did you meet your husband? Well, he came up to Minnesota on a duck hunting trip one time, and he lost his hunting license. So he... Um, you were a decoy? No. <laughs> well, I was in an Indian pageant at that time, so he spent his evenings watching this pageant and flirting with me and saying fancy things. And... Like what? Oh, how you doing, kid? What you doing tonight? How about a date? And he didn't think I could understand English because I was in Indian costume all the time. When did he finally find out you understood every word he said? When he asked me to marry him, I fooled him, and I said yes. That's one question a woman can understand in 68 different languages. (laughs) By the way, have you taught your husband how to speak Chippewa? Well, um, a short time after we were married, I told him, Honey, I'll bet I can make you talk Indian. Talk in two minutes. And right after that, he declared war on them. Uh, <laughs> he said, how? I said, see, 
I made you talk Indian already. You said you have a variety of little jokes in your face. <laughs> You know, I was up in Montana last summer at Blackfeet uh, Reservation up there. I was up there. They were shooting a Western picture, some friends of mine, and I went up to watch them. I had this big museum up there, this Indian museum, and I went in, of course, I had my little girl with me, and we, I was interested, and she was. And we went there, and there were, oh, there was a couple of dozen Indians in there looking at this exhibit, this Indian exhibit. They had moccasins there, and a canoe, and uh, all kinds of blankets, and uh, things that they carry, the papooses, and... And these Indians were standing there, and they were fascinated by this stuff. Most of them had never seen any of these things. <laughs> and I, start, I had been in a Western picture with a lot of Indians in one of our movies, and I was explaining to the Indians what all these things were for. The <laughs> incongruity to have me standing there from New York City explaining to the Indians about their own paraphernalia. There's no joke to this, but I thought it was a kind of an interesting piece of Americana. Now, John, occasionally I like to sound people out on their hobbies. Do you have any uh, particular ones that we could discuss? Uh, yes, I do, Groucho, well, but... What do you uh, do? What is it? I paint with salt and pepper. You paint with... Uh, what do you mean, you paint with salt? What do you paint, steaks? <laughs> uh, no, Groucho, I paint uh, portraits of uh, pretty girls, landscapes, and so forth. Mm -hmm. you know. Now, this is modern art. You have to take it with a grain of salt. <laughs> Have you sold any of these salt and pepper pictures? Yes, quite a number, Groucho. As a matter of fact, a, a few of them are in some of the finest bars in Hollywood. <laughs> well, so have I been, but I can't paint. <laughs> well, how much do you get for these? Uh... I ask $500 a picture, Groucho. No, you haven't answered my question. <laughs> oh, well... Uh... So how much do you get? I asked 500 but I got 30 for my last. Oh, yes. <clears throat> now we're getting down to basic uh, facts here. Yeah. What kind of work do you do, John? I'm a window cleaner, Groucho. A window cleaner? Is that so? Oh, yeah. Hmm. What kind of windows do you clean? Uh, dirty ones. <laughs> That's a pretty good joke. Uh, <laughs> I'm just surrounded by feeble jokes here tonight. <laughs> now, I'll bet five dollars that I can teach you to talk Indian in less than two minutes, okay? I'll bet you can't. No, you weren't supposed to say that. <laughs> You were supposed to say how. Okay, here's your five dollars. <laughs> You're getting too sharp for the old quiz master. <laughs> well, it's been fun talking to you two, but I'm sure you'd rather win some money. So let's play your bet your life. In the race for the thousand dollars, our first couple, Chuck Wallace and his partner, are still leading with two hundred fifty dollars. Let's see how much money you can make. You selected movie quiz, and remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. What do you want to start with, and one answer between? Seventy. Mm Seventy. -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is Henry King's job in the making of a movie? Uh, he's a director. That's right. He's a director. Okay. Your bankroll now contains one hundred seventy dollars. Want to quit? Want to go ahead? I want to go ahead. Okay. I do too. All right. What do you well, want to try? Let's play eighty. 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 Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. All right. Who won the Academy Award for her portrayal, portrayal of the title role in Kitty Foyle? Ginger Rogers. Yes. Ginger Rogers is right. <laughs> you now have two hundred and fifty dollars. We'll try the ninety. Ninety. Have you consulted this yes. with the oh, yes. Yes. John over here? Virginia Mayo's husband is also in pictures. What is his name? Michael O'Shea. Michael O'Shea is right. <laughs> your bankroll now contains three hundred and forty dollars. Here's your last chance to be the other couple. What do you want to go for? Well, hundred. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're betting a hundred. A hundred. <clears throat> Who won the Academy Award in 1946 as the best supporting actor in the picture, Best Years of Our Lives? It was his only movie role. Oh, the, um, anti... Yes, yes, it was uh, Harold. He's uh, he's the uh, the amputee, the veteran, uh, the veterans organization now, the uh, disabled American veterans. Uh, Harold... Uh, No, no. I'm afraid I don't know the last. The name is uh, the name is Harold Russell. You didn't guess the name. No, I'm sorry. Okay. How much did they win? And you wind up with one hundred seventy dollars. Well, that's not too bad. Thanks, and good luck from the Desoto Plymouth dealers. Sorry you didn't win it. And that means Groucho that Chuck Wallace and his partner with two hundred fifty dollars. In just one minute, get the chance of the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question.
And here's the winning couple, Groucho, Chuck Wallace and his partner, all set for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question. Here we go for $1,000. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully and please no help from the audience. In the year 1215, the Confederated Barons of England forced King John to sign one of the great documents of human liberties, the Magna Carta. For $1,000, where in England was this document signed? This is something you learned in school. Now, talk it over. Unless you can think of something else, I'll say the chatter of... What is the answer you two have decided upon? Charter Oak. No, it's Runny Mead, Runny Mead, England. Mm. So that means the big question next week will be worth $1,500. Well, they lost the big money, but how much they win the quiz, George? They won $250 in the quiz. Well, congratulations and thanks to both of you and to all of our contestants on the show tonight. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at the same time for the Groucho Marx Show, when the big question will be worth $1,500. And don't miss Groucho's television show, also brought to you by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember that the dealers who sell the outstanding DeSoto Automatic with fully automatic power flight transmission also have on display the remarkable new Plymouth, engineered and built to be your best buy in the low-priced field. DeSoto, Plymouth, two great new cars. Both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks. And remember, just be sure to see the DeSoto Automatic. Folks, here's a reminder from the National Safety Council. Caution, control, and courtesy are the ingredients that add up to traffic safety. You bet your life. Transcribed from Hollywood is produced by John Goodell. Directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jack Meekin. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. You Bet Your Life is heard by our armed forces throughout the world. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is smile. S M I L E. <laughs> really? <laughs> you bet your life. <laughs> It's Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood and brought to you by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers. The dealers who have on display the outstanding DeSoto Automatic with fully automatic power flight transmission and the all-new Plymouth, your best buy in the low-priced field. And now, here he is, the one, the only... What a grisly name. Oh, that's me. Well, here I am again with $1,500 for one of our couples. Well, Groucho, we have a young married couple for you tonight. And uh, when you meet them, I think you'll understand why I invited them to the show tonight. They're sort of special guests. So, Mr. and Mrs. Bob Mathias, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx? <laughs> Well, welcome, kids, for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word and take home uh, an extra hundred dollars. It's a common word, something you always have uh, with you. Mr. and Mrs. Bob Mathias. Well, the, the stool I'm sitting on is just like 42nd Street and Broadway. Sooner or later, the whole world passes by your door. <laughs> like Port Said. In case there's anybody who doesn't recognize him, this fellow happens to be the greatest all-around athlete of our time. He's the male Babe Dickerson. <laughs> <laughs> This year's Jim Thorpe. <laughs> if you don't believe me, I'll ask Mrs. Matthias, isn't he? Sure, yes. <laughs> well, that proves it. What's your first name, Mrs. Matthias? Melba. Melba. Obviously, you're the toast of California. 
How long have you been married, Melba? Oh, about eight and a half months, Groucho. Mm -hmm. But you knew all about him when he was doing all that jumping and running, huh? That's right. Uh -huh. Well, since you caught him, I'd say you were the greatest athlete of our time. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> how old are you, Bob? 23, Groucho. Well, you're a pretty big fella, huh? How, how big are you? Well, I'm six foot three, mm -hmm. 205 pounds. And what do you weigh, Melba? Uh, about 118. He's twice as big as you are. <laughs> Does he scare you? No. <laughs> <laughs> it was always that way, ever since Samson and Delilah. <laughs> <laughs> She's probably planning to get my hair cut any day now. <laughs> How'd you meet Bob? Uh, do you remember the very first time you saw him? Oh, yes, sir. Uh, he was on the cover of Life magazine. What did you do? Ask him to get off so you could read it? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, how did you actually meet him? Well, it was at Stanford University. Uh, I was going around the corner, and he was coming from the opposite direction. And he, we bumped into one another, and he knocked me down, and he said, excuse me, and picked me up and went on. That's all he did, huh? Mm -hmm. Probably shows more sympathy when he knocks down a high hurdle. <laughs> How about Bob's athletic victories? What are some of his achievements, Melba? Do you recall? Well, uh, I think two of his greatest was... Uh, Marrying you, I think. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, was during the last two Olympics in 48 and 52. He won the decathlon event both years. And uh, in 52, he set a world and Olympic record and amassed the most points for the event. Have you always been athletic, uh, Bob? Uh, no, I haven't. Uh, when I was 13, I was anemic. I was tired and, and weak and a 90-pound weakling. You were tired and run down at the age of 13? Yes, sir. Took me 40 years to get in that condition. <laughs> <laughs> well, how did you change from this miserable little crawfish <laughs> into this legendary athlete? Well, my father is an MD and surgeon, a doctor, mm -hmm. and uh, he prescribed lots of rest, the proper foods, and gave me iron shots mm -hmm. to build back my uh, blood. What is your ambition, Bob? Are you still continuing your athletic career? Well, I took up golf about five, five months ago. Golf? Say, you really yeah. have a high ambition, huh? <laughs> you want to be president, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what is your best score at golf? Eighty-five. Eighty-five. Well, we're about the same there. Is that for eighteen holes or nine? Eighteen, I'm, I'm afraid. Eighteen, yes. Yeah. Well, mine is for three holes. <laughs> <laughs> But that's for cheating, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what are your plans for the immediate future, Bob? Are you in training for the next Olympics? Uh, no, I'm not. I'm through with track and field, but right now uh, we're getting ready to make a motion picture called The Bob Mathias Story, oh. a picture about my life. Who's going to play the part of Bob Mathias? I am. Could you use me as the 13-year-old? <laughs> <laughs> you going to play yourself in the picture? Yes, I am. Well, no one ever plays himself in a Hollywood movie. <laughs> I should think the part would call for a real brawny type like uh, Clifton Webb. <laughs> <laughs> Freddie Bartholomew. Uh, <laughs> what happens when the picture's over? What are you going to do? After the picture, I go into the United States Marine Corps for two years. Oh. <laughs> well, in that case, my congratulations to the Marine Corps. Huh? <laughs> They're certainly getting a one-man army. Well, I've certainly enjoyed meeting you two. Thank you. It'd be nice if all the American couples looked like you two. Beautiful girl and a handsome athlete. Oh, thank you very much. And here I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see how much money you can win. You're going to play your bet your life. We start you off with a bankroll of $100. You're both college students, so you ought to be pretty smart. <laughs> Every time you miss a question, you lose half of whatever your bankroll amounts to at the time. You're entitled to four questions, but you can quit any time you feel you've won more than the other couples. Clear? Right. Mm -hmm. You select a general information quiz. Mm -hmm. And remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Seventy. Seventy. Is that all right with you? Uh, That's fine. <laughs> what was the name of the celebrated French line of fortifications along the German frontier? Mm -hmm. Maginot. Is that the Maginot line? Maginot line. Maginot well, line. Enough, yes. <laughs> <laughs> You're on your way. Your bankroll is now $170. Now what do you want to try? 60? We'll try 60. 60. What, are the, what do the following have in common? Kohinoor, Great Mogul, and Hope. Kohinoor, Great Mogul, and Hope. They're all the same. They have different names. 
If you don't know, guess. Comedians. <laughs> well, there is a whole comedian. <laughs> I don't know any Cohen or though, a great mogul. Well, they're all famous diamonds. Well, oh. you oh, lost yes. uh, half your bankroll, so you still have $85. All right, now what do you want to try? Eighty. Eighty dollars. What do you associate with words cumulus, stratus, and cirrus? I believe that's how you pronounce uh, it. Clouds. Clouds is good enough. Don't go any further. <laughs> the bankroll is now $165. Now, what do you want to try? Here's your last chance to be the other couples. $90. $90. This is the last hurdle. <laughs> Whose picture is on the regular issue of the three cent stamp? You don't know guess. Washington or Jefferson? Which one? Jefferson. Jefferson. That's right, Jefferson. You gave me a heart rate. <laughs> Thanks and good luck oh, from the soda Plymouth deal. And you wind up with a total of two hundred and uh, fifty five dollars. <laughs> This year, DeSoto is automatic with power flight drive that's the best. Just the turn of a key and you're ready to breeze. No clutch and no shifting, just drive as you please. DeSoto has beauty that's clean and modern. Both inside and out, it's a dream. For the finest car yet, you should drive, you should get the DeSoto Automatic. Yes, drive a new DeSoto automatic, equipped with Power Flight, America's finest fully automatic transmission. You'll find driving is easier and far less tiring because DeSoto's fully automatic Power Flight transmission was designed to carry out your sudden orders quickly, smoothly, quietly. So for a new driving thrill, drive a new DeSoto automatic with Power Flight. And if it's power you're looking for, get behind the wheel of a DeSoto Fire Dome. The mighty Fire Dome 170 horsepower V8 engine gives you all the power you can possibly use at the touch of a toe. Ready to perform the instant you call on it. Visit your DeSoto Plymouth dealer tomorrow and treat yourself to the beauty and luxury of a new DeSoto automatic. Available in two great series, the mighty 170 horsepower Fire Dome 8 and the superb Power Master 6. Remember, DeSoto puts you ahead automatically. All right, George, who's next? We invited some business women to the show tonight, Groucho, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Mrs. Lindy Jamel to be your guest. Her partner is a businessman, Mr. C.W. Wiggle. So, folks, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx? <laughs> Welcome, folks, to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Mrs. Lindy Gannell. Let's start with you. Uh, where is your home, Lindy? Well, I came from Sigourney, Iowa. Uh, Sigourney Island? Sigourney, Iowa. That's an Indian chieftain's name. What sort of work do you do, uh, Mrs. Gim? Well, I have a foster freeze. I didn't ask you where you were frozen, Mrs. Gim. <laughs> I just was interested to know what sort of work you do. Oh, you mean what foster freeze is? Yeah. Well, um... We're an ind a small independent business, mm -hmm. and uh, we have 200 stores in the state of California. A small independent business? Small right. independent 200 business. Stores? 200 stores in the state of California. What do you consider California. a large uh, business? Well, larger than the little store I operate. Treasury department? <laughs> <laughs> well, what is the stuff good for? Do you rub it on your chest when you have a cold? Oh, no, it's food. It's the most delicious and healthy food there is. We How's have chocolate, taste? strawberry, chocolate riffle. Uh -huh. And uh, who, are you, who are you again? Uh... I am C.W. Wiggle. <laughs> That's an odd name. Uh, certainly a new twelve. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like an English name, is it? No, it is not, Groucho. It's Swiss origin. Swiss? That's right. Can you yodel? No, I cannot. I ask all Swiss people if they can yodel, because <laughs> it's commonly accepted that they can all yodel, huh? What is your full name, Mr. Wiggle? Uh, C. Wilbert Wiggle. <laughs> I'd, rather, I'd rather see Marilyn Wiggle if I had not <laughs> However, go ahead. <laughs> I'd be glad to see uh, uh, Wiggle, uh, Wilbert Wiggle. Wilbert, is it? Uh... That's right. 
I'm sure you must get kidded about your name, huh? Yes, I do, Groucho. You must hear many wisecracks. What are some of those you hear? Why, when I was a kid in school, the teacher in school called me Wiggle by name and Wiggle by nature, and then as I grew up and put on this weight, why, everybody called me Wee Willie Wiggle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what sort of job do you do, uh, Wiggle, or have? I am or district operate, huh? manager for the National Federation of Independent Business. Uh -huh. Now, that's an organization of... Do you ever drop in on, on Linda here? I haven't as yet, but probably I will after the show. <laughs> what we do is call on these businessmen. Are you married? You're married. Oh, yes, I'm married. Would you take your wife with you when you went to visit? My wife is always with me. She's right up in the audience right now. Uh, would, uh, would she go with you to the Foster Freeze place? Oh, certainly, at all times. Okay. Apparently, she's on to you, huh? <laughs> Well, well, but I'm, I'm all in favor of the small businessmen. I think they're a very necessary and essential part of our economy. And after the show, we'll all have a force to freeze, shall we? Yeah? That's right. Followed by a chaser of antifreeze. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now, let's play you bet your life. We'll start you off with a bankroll of $100. You try to build it up by answering four questions. Every time you miss one, you lose half your bankroll. In the race for the $1,500, the first couple won $255, and the secret word is smile. You select a food quiz, and remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Now, which question do you want to start with? Better make it a cheap one. Okay, we'll make it 40. 40. Okay, if the meat from a sheep is called mutton, what do you call meat from a calf? Veal. Mm. That is right. You now have $140. Now, uh, what so do you want to try? The 51 or the 31? 50. All right, we'll try the 50, Groucho. 50? What kind of a fruit is a royal am? That's a cherry. That is right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's a cherry. Your bankroll is now one hundred and ninety dollars. Let's try a thirty this time. Okay. Let's try a thirty this time. A thirty? Yes. Okay. What do you call the heart, liver, and gizzard of poultry? Talk it over. Entrails. What do you say? I guess not. I don't know. Well, it's giblets. Here's your last chance to beat the other couples. Well, you've uh, you've lost half your bankroll, so you have $95. You have $95. Now, right. you can quit or go ahead. No, we'll go on. Okay. What I'm do you want? this one. $100 one, 10 60. Anything. It's hard to take the easy one. 20 20 or 60 60 60 60 A popular Japanese alcoholic beverage is made from rice. What is it called? Uh, sake? That is right. Sake is right. <laughs> Thanks and good luck, Minnesota Plymouth And you wind up with $155. <laughs> George, who's next? Well, Groucho, we invited some dog show judges to our program tonight. And before we went on the air, our studio audience selected uh, Donya Klein to be on the show. And her partner is a visitor from the Middle West, Mr. Louis Menke. So, folks, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your bet your life. Say the secret word and divide a hundred dollars. Something, it's something, it's a common word. Something you always have with you. I've been saying this for seven years and I still can't say it. Mrs. Uh, Donia Klein and Mr. Lewis Menke, huh? Mrs. Klein, you're a dog show judge? Yes. Well, don't be nervous. I won't bite. <laughs> Lewis Menke, huh? Menke. Yes, sir, that's me. Are you, you're a dog judge? No, I'm just a farmer. Oh, farmer. Pig judge, huh? Well, I'm a pretty good judge of pigs, yes. Oh. Well, don't look at me, huh? But I, <laughs> I still have a, a good dog, though. You have? Oh, huh? yeah. We keep one good dog. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you, Mr. Marks, I'll tell you, a good dog is worth $1,000 on a farm. I'll tell you why. If I'd have a dog down in my cellar and my house would go fire, he'd bark and scratch on the door, he might save my whole family's life. Well, if he didn't come out, he'd be a hot dog. He would be a hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> he's still going to come out if he's able to. Yes, you're, you're a dog, right. A dog is your best friend. He'll yeah. never go back on you. You That's can spank him a dozen times, and when he, you say, come on, puppy, he'll always... He's got more. He's got more sense than lots of people have. You can say that again. Absolutely. You can say that again, and I hope you don't. <laughs> I, are you married? I... No, sir. I never married. You, you're not married. I'm not married. But I'm the happiest. Why not? I'm the happiest old bachelor in the state of Iowa. Yeah. You you enjoy being a bachelor? Do I ever enjoy? If I wasn't an old bachelor, I couldn't be in California tonight. I'd have to be down in Iowa taking maybe dictation from my wife. But I have no wife. So what do you do? Take dictation from the dog? No, sir. He don't dictate me either. Well, do, you, do, you, do you have a lot of fun as a I bachelor? Have, I have more fun than any man in the United States. I do, for a fact. Well, how is that? Do you well, take I'll all take your it. corn and distill it? No, I don't even drink, Mr. Mark. <laughs> but I'll tell you what I do. 
You don't I, drink? I don't drink, cuss, swear, or even run women. But my pleasure... What do you mean, run women? You, <laughs> you don't run women, you run cattle and well, sheep. Well, that's a fellow chasing. Yeah. That's a fellow chase women, but I don't do that. You don't chase no, women? Sir. Don't they, they have no attraction for you well, at all? Well, I would say just no attraction, but I never hooked up with one. I love them all, but I never hooked up with one. <laughs> In fact, I never want to be, uh, be on a woman's thumb. I want to be my own boss. And I'm going to keep it that way. I've done it for 54 years, and I believe I can try it a little longer. <laughs> but listen, if I ever do get married, if I ever do get married, I'm going to stick with it for life. I ain't going to do it like some of these folks. The first thing you know, when you get married to a half a dozen women, it'll be your kids and my kids is fighting our kids. <laughs> Not over, if, if, if you don't get married soon, you won't have any kids. <laughs> they always say there's one and only Groucho Marx. So you're a very good sport. I'm the only one and only Louis Mank in the state well, of Iowa. I admire you, Louis. Uh, you're you're fine, fine, well, fine we, we'll keep it that way, Groucho. <laughs> He's got an answer for everything. Eh? Doesn't always add up, but it's an answer. <laughs> Tony, you're a dog show judge. Is that that's right? Well, yes. Uh, I may have a question to ask you later about a certain gay dog that I know. Huh? <laughs> What kind of dogs do you judge, four-legged or two-legged? Well, uh, I judge the four-legged kind. I judge uh, all of the hounds in the... Four-legged hound or two-legged? Eh? Four-legged ones. Mm -hmm. Afghans, beagles, bloodhounds, borzois, whippets, those that are in the hound group, mostly. Well, pretend we're at a dog show, uh, don't you, and you're about to judge a bloodhound. What is the first thing you do? You see if he's anemic? Uh, no, after the dogs come in and parade around the ring and stand for your judgment, I look at the teeth, and uh, then I look at the wrinkles in the dog's head and see uh, if it has a dip behind its withers so that its back doesn't I beg grow. Your what was that? <laughs> you see if it has a dip behind its withers? Do you yes. understand this, uh, Louis? Oh, it's all Latin to me. I don't know much about dogs, no. We have one dog, but he's just a mutt. He's just a, just a dog. But does he have a dip behind his withers? Uh? I wouldn't know anything about the dip, no. <laughs> now, Mrs. Klein, mm -hmm. I, I happen to read a piece in a recent issue of Coronet Magazine called Dogs Are Dumb. Uh, did you read that? Uh? Yes, I certainly did. And do you agree with that? No, I don't agree with it because the, the man uh, asked the dogs to drop little round balls and square holes and uh, do a lot of uh, kindergarten stuff uh, that dogs are not inclined for, and if uh, the man who wrote this article knew anything about dogs, he wouldn't say that they're dumb, because I'd like to send the man down into a badger hole and see what he could do with a badger. That's what our dachshunds do. And I'd like to see uh, what he could do about retrieving a duck or pointing birds out in the field and, and uh, a few of the things that dogs really can do. The most wonderful example of intelligence uh, with dogs are the dogs which are trained for seeing eye. Yeah. And if anyone can say that dogs are dumb and watch one of those seeing eye dogs work, and, uh, well, I just can't agree with him at all. <laughs> <laughs> In other words, we see it all with you. Um, well, Louie, uh, tell us about your farm in Iowa. What kind of a farm is it? Well, it's a, it's a stock farm. It's mostly cattle and, and cattle and hogs is the main goal. But we raise uh, corn and beans and oats and a little wheat for the chickens and alfalfa. And is, there, is there money in farming? Well, if there wasn't, I wouldn't be here today. Where would you be? Uh, well, I'd probably be out working every day. Uh, you don't living. regard that as work? On well, farm? sure it's work. But I'll tell you where we have a farmer has over most city people. I'll tell you why. If I want to work, if I want to work 24 hours, I can work 24 hours. If you want to punch a clock for eight hours and you miss an hour or so in the morning, you're out. But if I oversleep, I can work an hour over in the evening, I can make it up. If I have a rainy day, I can go to town all day. When it gets good, I can work two days in one. I got it over you. I can put you in the factory, Mr. Marks, and, and you run a machine. Not so loud. My sponsor's library here. Well, <laughs> I don't care for your sponsor. I'm, I got the floor now. Well, I, I do, <laughs> Well, how about a bride, Louie? Uh, a bride? Do you have any ideas on uh, what you'd like if well, you get you. married? Uh? Yes, sir. I, I, I like a little beauty, but beauty's only skin deep, and the other fellow said, for Lord's sake, skin her. But we'll not do that tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Some people try to live on love. They try that for about six months. They find out that doesn't work. But we have a sign in our little restaurant down home. It says, if your wife can't cook, don't divorce her. Keep her for a pet and eat here. But who wants to keep her for a pet? <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, you're sort of a cracker barrel philosopher, aren't you? <laughs> more, more truth and poetry. Last week, it was a couple had a bunch of kids going to school, and one little kid said, I don't like your daddy. He says, why? He said, because he drinks. He said, how do you know? He said, we had him last year. <laughs> And who knows who'll get him next year? <laughs> <laughs> your, ju- your guess is good as mine. It's been a delightful experience talking to you two. <laughs> now it's time to play your bet your life. Mm-hmm. We start you off with a bankroll of $100, and you try to increase it. In the race for the $1,500, Mr. and Mrs. Bob Mathias are still leading with $255. Let's see how much money you can make. You selected the animal kingdom, and remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Mm-hmm. Are you ready? You can start off with anything you want. Well, you were worried about starting too high, so we'll start at about $60. $60. $60. What kind of an animal is a Clyde, Clydesdale? That's a horse. That's a horse is correct, huh? Real, real, really cheap. Well, your bankroll is now $160. Now, what do you want to try? You want to go up or down? Well, it's up to you. Well, I thought you didn't want any women to rule your life. <laughs> Age, age, age before beauty. Age before beauty. Take the $50 All right, we'll say $50. $50. What is the name of the huge vulture of the South American Andes? It is one of the largest birds that flies. Oh, the vulture in the Andes. Talk it over. It's part of the vulture family. Pelican? No, that's not a vulture. No, it's a condo. C-O-N-D-O-R. Well, you lost half your bankroll. You now have eighty dollars. All right. Now, what do you want to try? You better take uh, seventy or eighty. Yeah, what do you want let's to take do? seventy. All right. All right. What is the science of ornithology? Talk it over. Oh, it's birds. Mm-hmm. Science of birds. Study of birds is right. You now have one hundred fifty dollars. And it's your last chance to beat the other couples. You can quit or you can proceed. Well, let's take ninety dollars. All right. Ninety dollars. What kind of animals live in warrens? In where? Warrens. W A R R E N S. Those aren't there. Talk right? it over. Warrens that live in warrens. Warrens. Some of the bird family, aren't they? Wrens. No, you should have known this, Louie. It's rabbits. And you wind up with one half your bankroll, so you have $75. Thanks, and good luck with the Soto Clement deal. We've had fun. That means, Groucho, that Mr. and Mrs. Bob Mathias, with $255 in just one minute, get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is National Safety Month. Can you see, steer, stop safely? If not, check your car. Check accidents. With a busy driving season here, now is the time to check your car. Be safe by driving a safe car. Last year, over a million people were killed and injured in needless automobile accidents. A good percentage of these accidents would have been avoided if the car owners had taken a small amount of time to have their cars checked. And to make sure your car gets a complete safety checkup, there's no better place to take it than to a DeSoto Plymouth dealer. His factory-trained mechanics will go over every part of your car that can affect your safety to make sure they are all in perfect working order. Wheels, brakes, headlights, tires, steering, windshield wipers, glass, horn, muffler, taillights, everything you need for safe driving. You'll be surprised how little time and money it takes to keep you and your family safe on the highways. Remember, to be a safe driver, you must be able to see, steer, stop safely. Check your car. Check accidents. Stop in where you'll see the sign of better service, the friendly sign of your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And here's the winning couple, Groucho. Mr. and Mrs. Bob Mathias, all set for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question. Here we go for $1,500. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully and please no help from the audience. In the last presidential election, Adlai Stevenson ran on the Democratic ticket. For $1,500, who was his running mate? Talk it over. You got 15 seconds. Mm-hmm. 
bicara no. <laughs> What's the answer you two have decided upon? No, I know he's, he's okay, from he's Alabama, a southern state, but that's Well, it's John Sparkman. Oh. <laughs> so that means the big question next week will be worth $2,000. Well, you lost the big money, but how much did they win the quiz, George? Uh, $255 in the well, quiz. congratulations and thanks to both Thank of you, you and to all of our contestants on the show tonight. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night for the Groucho Marx Show. And don't miss Groucho on television. Also brought to you by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks. And remember, just be sure to see the DeSoto Automatic. <laughs> DeSoto Plymouth Dealers salute the great state of Michigan during Michigan Week. Vacation in Michigan, the water wonderland this summer. You bet your life. Transcribed from Hollywood is produced by John Goodell. Directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jack Meekin. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. You bet your life is heard by our armed forces throughout the world. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is water. W-A-T-E-R. Really? You bet your life! It's Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life. The comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood and brought to you by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers. The dealers who have on display the outstanding DeSoto Automatic with fully automatic power flight transmission and the all-new Plymouth, your best buy in the low-priced field. And now, here he is, the one, the only... That's me, Hernando DeSoto. <laughs> Well, here I am again with $2,000 for one of our couples. George, who's first? Well, Groucho, we have some people with interesting stories for you tonight. And without further ado, Andy Sanchez and without Lee Whitney, what? further ado. Oh, that's pretty fancy. Too. <laughs> what does that mean? Right now, would uh, <laughs> Lee Whitney and, and Mr. Sanchez come in, please, and meet? Further ado, is this the way you talk in private life, too? <laughs> no, I... No, no. You no. wouldn't say that if you were playing poker with three or four or five fellas, would you? I wish I hadn't said it tonight. I... <laughs> and... Further ado. Huh? I sort of like it now. <laughs> and without further ado, Andy Sanchez and Lee Whitney. Repeating it, huh? <laughs> Andy. Uh... <laughs> welcome, welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Without further ado. <laughs> Liz Whitney and Andy Sanchez, eh? Lee Whitney. Lee, Lee Whitney, yes. oh. Miss Whitney, obviously I should start with you. Is that okay? Uh, it's not Miss Whitney, it's Mrs. Obviously I should start right where I started. I should stop right here. However, I might as well find out a few things. Uh, without further ado, uh, where, are you, where are you from, Lee? I'm from Detroit, Michigan. Detroit, huh? Mm -hmm. Wonderful place, Detroit. The sun rises and sets there every day. Did you ever visit the DeSoto factory in, in Detroit? Yes, as a matter of fact, I modeled for the DeSoto company. You don't say, a DeSoto mm -hmm. model, mm -hmm. huh? Men, wouldn't you like to have one of these models in your garage? <laughs> <laughs> what else did you do in Detroit, Lee? Well, I used to model Chris Craft speedboats, and you I did... You modeled speedboats? <laughs> yes. Well, how do you model a speedboat? Well, uh, I used to sit on the on the boat, you know, when it was in or out of the water, and they used to take pictures. I used to wear. Really? You said water. You 
said, water, that's the secret word, and without further ado, you get $50. <laughs> and here's $50 for you with plenty of ado. <laughs> now, uh, how, did, how did you say you model a, a speedboat? Well, There's I no s- point in saying water again. You've got your $50. <laughs> <laughs> I sit on the boat. You know, you've seen the girls that wave on the boats? No, I, no girls no. wave to me. In here. <laughs> <laughs> the only waves I see are the waves that are in the water. I <laughs> and they take pictures of the boat while it's in motion and out of motion. Uh-huh. And then they put them in various magazines. I see. Well, Andy uh, Sanchez, uh, you... S- it's me, Groucho. I used to smoke a cigar with that name. <laughs> Where are you from, Mr. Sanchez? Albuquerque, New Mexico. Albuquerque? Sir. What did you do for a living in Albuquerque, Andy? I uh, sold Carl's shoes. You sold Carl's shoes? And what did he do, run around barefoot? <laughs> <laughs> While we're on the subject of shoes, Andy, tell me, do you have a mate? Yes, I do, Groucho. Been married 39 years. Do you have any kids? Yes, I have six grown children, three beautiful daughters, and three good-looking young men. Have you been a good father to this uh, large Very man? good. I raised them nicely and advised them instead of using the paddle. What do you mean? You were out in a canoe with them? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I never uh, spanked them or used a whip or anything like that. You mean after they grew up, you were afraid, huh? (laughs) Somebody once said, never strike your children except in (laughs) self-defense. Well, let's return to you, Leah. When when did you meet your husband? Well, I met him, well, uh, about 18 months ago when I was a chorus girl. I met him while I was... You were in show business, huh? Yes. What what show were you with? The Top Banana Show. Really? Oh, uh-huh. you know, the Phil Silver is the star of the show. is one of my best friends. Did you know that? Well, I, I thought he might be. Mm-hmm. What, what, do you think, what do you think of him? Well, I think he's wonderful. I think he's one of the funniest men in the world, really. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, there goes a beautiful friendship. <laughs> <laughs> Lee, what did, what did you do in Top Banana? Well, I was the understudy to the lead, the oh. leading lady in Who the show. Who was the leading lady? I don't remember. Well, there were two, Judy Lynn and Kay Ballard. Uh-huh. And uh, I, would, I did a lot of chorus work, too. Mm. I was the girl with the pinwheels. Mm. Uh, they had a, a skit, the very last scene Well, I was the, the boy with the telescope in the second uh-huh. row. <laughs> <laughs> what does an understudy do? Could you tell the audience? Because most yes. of them are not familiar with the, the Well, theater. an understudy is, uh, has to know the lines and know exactly what the songs are. And she goes usually through rehearsal twice a week with the cast. Mm. And she has to be ready each night on a moment's notice to go on if anything happens. But most of the time, she just stands around and waits for the leading lady to uh, break her leg or something (laughs) to go on. Well, how often do they break their leg? Not too often, I'm afraid. No. It's this kind of warmth and loyalty that proves there's no business like show business. (laughs) And anyway, if she broke her leg, she'd still be in the cast. Well, it's been fun talking to you two, and now let's see how much money you can win. Without further ado, we, we're going to go into the quiz. Remember, we start you off with $100. If you miss a question, you lose half your bankroll. You can stop any time you feel you're ahead of the other couples. Is that clear? You're very yes, clear. Sir. Thank you. Okay, let's see how much money you can make. You selected music, and remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Sixty. Sixty. All right. Sixty dollars. One answer between you. Jack Macon and the orchestra are going to play a great tune written by Maxwell Anderson and Kurt Weill. You identify it. Play, Jack. September song. <laughs> September song. That's right. We just wanted to see if they could play it. <laughs> well, your bankroll is now one hundred sixty dollars. Okay. Now, what do you want to try? Seventy. Seventy dollars. Right. Stranger right. in Paradise is from what Broadway musical? Uh, Kismet. Kismet mm-hmm. is correct, eh? then. Wow. You now have two hundred thirty dollars. What do you want to do? What about the eighty dollars now? You want the eighty dollars? Eighty dollars. Wow. All right. Words and music for such great songs as Strike Up the Band, Embraceable You, and Someone to Watch Over Me were written by two famous brothers. Who are they? Oh dear. Talk it over. Uh, what? Well, can you? Two famous brothers. They wrote Strike Up the Band, Embraceable You, and Someone to Watch Over oh, Me. Oh, my. Um, Two uh, famous brothers. Matt Rogerson. Right. Talk it over. Uh, and one answer to uh, Who is it? Uh, 
Roger's in heart? No, it's George and Ira Geisman. Oh, you should have known that. I should have known this. You uh, still have half of your bankroll, so you have $115. That means your last chance to beat the other couples. You can go ahead or quit. I'll take the $50 one. Now. All right, the $50 one, I guess. All right, Gus Kahn and Isham Jones wrote this song in 1924. You tell me what it is. Play, Jack. <laughs> It had to be you. It had to be you. <laughs> and you wind up with one hundred sixty-five dollars. Well, thanks and good luck to the Soda Plymouth dealers. Only Plymouth dares to compare. Yes, only Plymouth dares to compare part by part with the other two cars in the lowest price field. Recently, a 1954 Plymouth and current models of the other two best-known low-price cars were taken apart by Plymouth engineers and compared, part by part. The findings, published in a free booklet available at your DeSoto Plymouth dealer, prove Plymouth is America's best-buy low-price car in frame and body construction, safety, comfort and convenience, under the hood. Go to your DeSoto Plymouth dealer and get the complete facts in the free eight-page Plymouth booklet. Then go for a ride in a new 54 Plymouth and see for yourself why Plymouth is America's best buy low price car. For example, the Plymouth six-passenger Plaza Club Sedan, $1,582. Factory retail price at Factory Detroit, Michigan. All taxes, transportation and delivery charges, license and optional equipment extra. See and drive the new 54 Plymouth the only car in the lowest price field that dares to compare part by part. We invited some girls who work for an airline to the show, Groucho, and our studio audience selected Miss Mary Whitney to be on the show. Her partner is a married man, Mr. Ben Frank Bell. Folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you find around the house. <laughs> Miss uh, Mary Whitney, eh? Yes, Groucho. I like my work. Uh, you're not married? No, I'm not. Engaged? No. Would you like to wrap me around your little finger? <laughs> I'll get back to you in a moment, uh, Mary. Less than that if I can swing it. <laughs> ben Frank Bell, eh? My friends call me Big-Footed Ben. <laughs> oh, it's going to be one of those evenings. Huh? <laughs> Where are you from, Ben? Texas. Texas. Huh? <laughs> Gee, I never suspect that. I was going to say New Hampshire. <laughs> You're from Texas, eh? What kind of work do you do, Ben? I do asbestos work. <laughs> uh, I cover a hot pipe, boilers, and so forth. And then I also cover, uh, put cork and so forth on refrigeration. I cover hot things and cold things. Your work sounds very interesting, Ben. Do you enjoy it? Is that what you've always wanted to do? I have always wanted to do public speaking. <laughs> I know hundreds of jokes and uh, stories, and some of them would do to tell the public. Well, we're certainly glad to offer you an opportunity to speak here as a public speaker. Let's hear one of your stories. Not a long one. Keep it kind of short. Well, for one thing, down in Texas, we always believed in doing things the easy way. If you rush through life, you get to heaven tired. And, and I know my pa had a pond out there, and uh, he stocked it with fish, and we taught those fish to chew tobacco. And then we'd get in a boat and go across this pond dropping out pieces of tobacco. And when we'd get on the other side, we'd get us up some baseball bats and come back along and knock them in the head when they'd come up to spit. <laughs> well, Ben, it's, it's stories like that that'll make you a big success in the asbestos business. <laughs> now, Mary, let's return to you. And I might add, the returns are very favorable. <laughs> what sort of work do you do? Are you a policeman? No, I'm a stewardess for Pan American. Oh, a stewardess. No wonder they strapped the passengers down. Do <laughs> <laughs> you like flying? Oh, yes, Groucho. There's nothing as romantic as flying. Have you ever taken a close look at a pelican? <laughs> 
Well, tell us about your job. Pretend I'm one of your passengers. What do you do first? Throw me off? No, no, I'd welcome you aboard. I'd you say, are. hello, Mr. Marks. It's nice to have you aboard with us today. Obviously, you've never flown with me before. <laughs> <laughs> well, go on. What happens next? And then I'd check to see that all the passengers have their seat belts fastened. Uh -huh. And then uh, I'd make the pre-departure announcement. Now, where do you go in these planes? We cover the Central and South Pacific. I, uh, for example, go on an Australia trip. I would go to Honolulu, Canton Island, the Fiji Islands, and to Sydney, Australia. Mm. How long does it take you to make a trip like this? It takes me 18 days. 18 days? Mm -hmm. You could go faster than that in a Wilshire bus. <laughs> Why does it take 18 days? <laughs> the passengers go right through, and it probably doesn't take them over 48 hours, but the crew stops You mean that the, the passengers go through without the plane? <laughs> <laughs> That's what they call jet propulsion, right? <laughs> was this always your ambition to be a stewardess? I think it was, Groucho. Mm -hmm. Most little girls dream of being a stewardess, like little boys dream of being cowboys, I'd say. Well, I'm just a little boy, and I certainly didn't dream of being a cowboy. <laughs> I guess there's something wrong with me. All I dream about are stewardesses. <laughs> well, it's been fun talking to you two. Now, let's play You Bet Your Life. In the race for the $2,000, the first couple won $165, and the secret word is water. Let's see how much money you can make. You selected the animal kingdom, and remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Hundred. A hundred. hundred. Well, you're ambitious. What do you call the teddy bear-like animals of Australia that lives in trees and eats only eucalyptus leaves? Koala bears. Koala bear is right. Well, you now have two hundred dollars. You know, I think this is the first time since we've been doing this new quiz that anybody has ever taken the hundred-dollar question first. Oh. And I admire your confidence and knowledge. Good. Now you have uh, two hundred dollars. You can quit or you can go ahead. A uh, ninety. Ninety? Yes. yes. Is that all right with yes. you, Mary? Mm -hmm. What is the correct word meaning a baby swan? Baby swan. Uh. Goslin. You don't know? Guess. Go ahead. Goslin. No, it's signet. It's spelled C Y G N E T, but it's pronounced signet. Well, you uh, still have half your bankroll. You have $100. Now, what do you want to try? Right. 80. 80 or 70? 80. 80. 80? What is the name of the orange and black poisonous lizard that lives in the southwest part of the United States? You ought to know that, then. We don't know guess. Uh, the stinging scorpion. Well, that's one of them. I'm sorry. It's the Gila monster. Well, you now have fifty dollars left. All right. Well, you want to bet? Let's see, fifty, uh, or shall we go up to sixty? Sixty? Mm -hmm. What kind of an animal is a Kodiak? It's a bear. Mm -hmm. it's a bear. Are you sure? A bear or a cat? A Kodiak is a bear. A bear. A bear is right. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> And you wind up with $110. Thanks and good luck Thank to the Soda Plymouth Dealers. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Fenneman, who's next? Well, Groucho, just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected uh, Mr. Louis Murphy, and his partner has an interesting story. She's Miss Frances Kane. So, folks, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Now, without further ado, Francis Kane and Lewis Murphy. Mr. Lewis Adu, let's start with you, huh? You're a fine figure of a fellow. I'd say you were about 35, is that right? Uh, thanks for the compliment, Groucho. Uh, uh, I'll do the same for you someday, but I'm 52, and uh, call me Murph, will you? Call you Murph? That's right. Okay, I'll call you both Murph if you want. <laughs> Where are you from, uh, uh, Lewis? Uh, Larimore, North Dakota. Larimore? Well, that's down in the cow country, huh? Well, Oil country, huh? It's oil country now, yes, yeah. of late. What sort of work do you do? I'm a plant guard. A plant guard? What yes, kind sir. of plants do you guard? Do you chase uh, the daisies away from the bachelor buttons? <laughs> no, I work for a general plant protection company out on 6900 South Hoover. We have about 500 men doing guard duty. 500 men doing guard duty? Yes, sir. You guard this one plant? There's five. No, we do industrial 
guarding industrial plants throughout the industrial area of Los Angeles and the county and Southern California. Well, tell but us something about we this. We uh, check the windows, the doors, fire equipment, burglar alarms, if there are any there, mm-hmm. or we take care of all entrances, and uh, we listen for strange noises and strange what, silences. What do you, what do you regard? What? You listen, listen for strange silences. Well, how do you hear a strange silence? It's quite you, simple because... You mean if you don't hear anything, you say, what was that, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. You are uh, Francis Kane? Kane. Where are you from, Francis? Uh, Bakersfield, California. Francis Kane from Bakersfield. Mm-hmm. I didn't know I realized that they raised Kane in Bakersfield. <laughs> <laughs> they did. They did, huh? Did you? <laughs> How long have you lived in uh, L.A., uh, Francis? Oh, about 30 years. 30 years, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, how mm-hmm. old were you when you left Bakersfield, <coughs> Francis? Well, if you want to know my age, I'm in the late 40s. I wasn't I don't prying know. into your age. I was, just, <laughs> I was just curious to know how old you are when you left Bakersfield. That's all. <laughs> but you answered my question. Uh, do you have a job, uh, Francis, or do you uh, keep house? Oh, I work at the Hollywood call board. I'm telephone operator. Oh, telephone operator. It's a telephone secretarial service. Is this a full-time job, Francis, or does it leave you any opportunity to pursue other interests, like well, betting on the horses? <laughs> well, I take time off now and then, write popular songs. You're a, song ri- a songwriter? Mm-hmm. Is that so? Have any of your songs ever been heard by the public? Yes. As a matter of fact, one of them sold over a million records. Really? What was the name of it? Stardust? No, it was called uh, Rose of the Mountain. Rose of the Mountain. And it sold a million records? Mm-hmm. How come I never heard of it if it sold that many? I listened to records. Well, it was on the back of Rosemary Clooney's recording of Come Out of My House. <laughs> Well, she certainly was lucky to be on the other side of such a big hit as the <laughs> Rose of the Mountain. Right? I think uh, two people heard it, and I'm one of them, I think. You heard it? Mm-hmm. Is there it much is. money in your songwriting? Well, there is, is now, finally. I've got a three-year contract after about 15 years. Is that so? Mm-hmm. Huh? Do you write the words or the music? Uh, I just write the lyrics. My brother told me when I started writing songs, I'd go from bad to verse, so I guess I did. <laughs> your, brother is, your brother is quite a clown, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> what does he do, uh, Francis? Is he well, a comic writer? He collects rocks. He does. <laughs> I think he's got a few of them in his head. <laughs> Francis, in addition to Rose of the Mountain, have you had any other big record sellers? Well, I had another one that was on the wrong side of a record. <laughs> it was on the back of Wheel of Fortune. It's called Heart of a Clown. Well, uh, you're apparently the most successful other side songwriter in America. <laughs> I agree with you. Have, you. have you written any new songs, Francis? Well, I've <coughs> been specializing in hillbilly songs. There's gold in them dark hills when you write hillbilly songs. There is. Eh? Well, uh, do you know anything about hillbillies? Or isn't that necessary? Well, I don't think so. What kind of a hillbilly song have you written? Oh, I've written with Cliffy Stone and Tex Williams. And uh-huh. I had one called She Was Pure as Snow, but she drifted. <laughs> You, you don't know where she is now. Huh? <laughs> could, you, uh, could you sing us a few bars of this uh, song, Francis? I couldn't carry a tune in a bucket. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I can bet Fenneman to bring in a bucket. It <laughs> bucket huh? he used to work in a bucket shop, and it wouldn't be any trouble for Fenneman at all. No. Could you give us the lyrics of, uh, of this song? Just a few lines mm-hmm. of the chorus? You can uh, recite it if you don't want one? to sing it. Uh, the, uh, I like the one about snow? the slush song, yes. Oh. <laughs> oh, she had- she hit the honky tonks in Kentucky. She hit the taverns in Tennessee. But I want you to know she was pure as snow till she drifted away from me. <laughs> There's nothing personal in this lyric, is there? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Well, I think there. I'm 
It isn't easy writing successful songs, Francis. Mm -hmm. And I hope someday soon you'll be on the right side of the record and make a lot of money. Thank you. Now, let's play You Bet Your Life. Do you uh, understand how we play this game? Mm -hmm. In the race for the $2,000, the first couple leads with $165. You selected movie quiz, and we start you off with $100. Well, what do you think? Which one do you want? 30. 10, 50, 80, 30. 100? 30. 30. 30. Mm -hmm. Who is the star of the Western picture? Hondo. Oh, John Wayne. That's right. <laughs> well, you're on your way. Your bankroll is now $130. Now, what would you like to try? 40. 40. Who produced such great film shorts as Seal Island and The Living Desert? Walt Disney. Walter Disney is correct. <laughs> you now have $170. Now, you can quit or go ahead. Well, we go ahead. Let's just take 50. You're doing so right, this way. 50. Ethel Merman played the title role of Annie Get Your Gun on Broadway. Who played it in the movies? Uh, Betty Talk it Hutt. over. What's that? Annie Get Your Gun. Wait. Annie Get Your uh, Gun. Betty Hutton. Betty Hutton is absolutely right. You now have $220. You want to quit or go no, ahead? We'll it's try. your last chance to be the other couples. Oh, well, we'll uh, try. Let's try 60. Uh, what we... Sixty, you haven't okay. had. That's a nice okay. round figure. In what successful movie thriller starring Orson Welles and Joseph Cotton was a zither used for background music? Uh, the Third Man. The Third Man is right, Francis. <laughs> and you wind up with two hundred eighty dollars. Thanks yeah. and good luck for the Soda Plymouth Dealers. And that means that the songwriter and her partner, with $280 in just one minute, get a chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $2,000 question. <laughs> all right, Groucho, here comes the winning couple, the songwriter and her partner, all set for the DeSoto Plymouth $2,000 question. Here we are back again, huh? Same day. Now, you probably... <laughs> <laughs> If you win this money, you can write a song about it, huh? <laughs> Brother, can you spare $1,000? Yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go for $2,000. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide out a single answer between you. Think carefully and please no help in the audience. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. The Bible is three sons of Adam and Eve. Two of them were Cain and Abel. For $2,000, who was the third son? Talk it over. <laughs> What is the Sorry. answer you two have decided upon? I just don't know. Well, I'm guess. Cain and Abel. Well. I'm sorry. I just don't know. It's Seth, S-E-T-H. Oh. I wouldn't have guessed it. So that means the big question next week will be worth $2,500. Well, you okay, lost the well, big money, you. but uh, how much did they win the quiz, George? Without further ado, tell me. Without further ado, $280 <laughs> in the quiz. Oh, that's pretty good. Well, congratulations, well, thank and you. thanks to both thank of you, you and to all of our you. contestants on the show tonight. Thank you, got you. From the... Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at the same time for the Groucho Marx Show, when the big question will be worth $2,500. And don't miss Groucho's television show, also brought to you by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember that the dealers who sell the outstanding DeSoto Automatic with fully automatic power flight transmission also have on display the remarkable new Plymouth, engineered and built to be your best buy in the low-priced field. DeSoto, Plymouth. Two great new cars. Both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks. And remember, just be sure to see the DeSoto Automatic. Folks, here's a reminder from the National Safety Council. When driving, remember that courtesy is contagious. You bet your life. Transcribed from Hollywood is produced by John Goodell. Directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jack Meekin. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. 
You Bet Your Life is heard by our armed forces throughout the world. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is house. H-O-U-S-E. Really? You bet your life. It's Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood and brought to you by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers. The dealers who have on display the outstanding DeSoto Automatic with fully automatic power flight transmission and the all-new Plymouth, your best buy in the low-priced field. And now, here he is, the one, the only... I wonder what became of Sally. And Groucho. Oh, that's me. Well, here I am again with $2,500 for one of our couples. Mr. Fenneman, uh, bring on the first couple. Oh, Groucho, we have some young single people for you. They were chosen by our studio audience just before we went on the air. Miss Ula Anderson and Mr. Charles O'Brien Osborne. Would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx? Welcome, welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Ula Anderson and Charles O'Brien Osborne. And you're both single? That's right. Yes. Mm. Ula? Is that how you pronounce it? Ula. Ula. <laughs> yeah, Ula. French have a word for it. Ula la. <laughs> yeah, I know. You're a Svenska? Yeah, I'm Swedish. Yeah. Do you what? speak Swedish? No, but I uh, wish I did. Huh? <laughs> After looking at you, I wish I could speak English. Huh? <laughs> what part of uh, Sweden are you from? Minneapolis? No, I'm from Ocean Speak. What was that? Enschelsvik. Could you, could you spell that for the audience? Or? Well, I can't spell it in English, but I can spell it in Swedish because you don't have those letters. <laughs> well, spell it in Swedish, huh? E-R-N-S-K-E-L-D-S-V-I-K. Now spell it backwards. <laughs> well, I can't. How long have you been from Sweden? One and a half year. Oh, I see. How old are you, Ula? Eighteen. Well, you're a very pretty Svenska, huh? <laughs> Certainly the best advertisement for smorgasbord I've seen in a long time. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if you could pick her instead of the herring on that small? <laughs> Charles O'Brien Osborne, huh? That's a pretty imposing name. Which one of these three names shall I call you? I'd rather you call me Chad, sir. Chad? That's right, sir. How old are you, Chad? I'm Twenty. Twenty. Well, we're both in the prime of life. <laughs> the only difference is they have to prime me to get me started in the morning. <laughs> what do you think of Ula? Oh, I think she's a very nice, pretty young lady. Uh, she has a very cute accent. <laughs> yes, she is. You ought to know. You've been looking at it ever since you've been up here. <laughs> How long have you been in this country, Chad? Uh, two months now. Two months, huh? And where, where, where do you come from, Europe? <laughs> well, it might be Europe to you, but it's North Carolina to me. <laughs> oh, you, you, you come from the United States, huh? Uh, Ula, how long have you been in this country? A year and a half, you mm-hmm. said, huh? What made you decide to come to America? Was it Chad? Well. <laughs> was it the equivalent of Chad? Well, it was lots of American pictures I saw, and it was real handsome boys in those pictures. <laughs> You saw American pictures, and that uh, prompted you to come to America. Huh? And now that you've been here a while, would you say these movies were accurate in depicting American men? Well, I think they're a little bit too overdone, though. <laughs> Don't you like them overdone? What do you want, them rare? <laughs> what did you really expect over here, Ola? 60 million Gregory Pecks? Um, you realize what that is? 60 million Pecks is 15 million bushels. <laughs> Much Chad, let's see if you're a gay, romantic, handsome, typical American male. What sort of work do you do? 
I work at a service station. <laughs> That's good, honest work. Is this your ambition, to someday own your own service station and, and service to Soto's and Plymouth's? Uh, uh, no, uh, Groucho, my ambition is to further my ability to be a stuntman. A stuntman? Right. At a service station? What do you do, <laughs> hang upside down from a gas pump? <laughs> That's certainly a curious way to give a gallon, uh, ten gallons of gas to a car, isn't it? What kind of a stunt man are you? I'm an aero trapeze artist. In the circus? No, uh, that comes under the uh, heading of uh, airplanes. You, I have uh, my trapeze bar that I hook underneath the airplane and then go up a couple thousand feet and hang by my heels and my knees. Well, that's not so exciting at that. <laughs> I did that the last time I flew east. It's called tourist third class. <laughs> what else did you do? Did you just hang there like a bat until the plane runs out of gas? No, after you get through your uh, your trapeze act, uh, the crowd, uh, they, they don't think you have a shoot on because you're up so high they can't see it. And they put the shoe over pretty big. You're hanging there by your heels and all of a sudden you just fall off. And, uh, That's a good joke on them. It kind of shakes the people up. Yeah. <laughs> it really shakes the people up, and you fall a couple of thousand feet, and then you open your chute. Uh -huh. They're they're all relieved then. Yeah. What is your opinion of American men now? Do you think Chad is a dashing, romantic, and gay, or do you think he should be locked up? No, oh, I think he's very brave, and I don't think many men would do the same thing as he does. Ola, would you like to go flying with Chad? No, I don't like to ride in airplanes. Well, you wouldn't be riding in the plane. You'd be swinging upside down. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're a charming couple, and now you're going to play your bet your life. And, Ola, this is one part of America you'll enjoy because you have a chance to make a lot of money here. We start you off with $100. If you miss a question, you lose half of your bankroll, and you can quit any time you like. Now, let's see how much money you can make. You selected music. And remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Now, what do you want to start with? Fifty. Don't kiss her. Just talk it over. <laughs> Fifty dollars? Fifty. All right. Let's see if you can identify this well-known Gershwin tune. Play, Jack. Talk it over. And one answer to please. Oh, it's a very well-known song. It's Embraceable You by George oh. and Ira Gershwin. Well, you lost half your bankroll. You'll still have $50. All right, now, don't get discouraged. What do you want to try this time? It's up to you. I'm going to let you decide. I messed up on the first one. <laughs> well, let's, uh, let's try 60. 60? This tune has been a favorite for years. What is it? Play, maestro. Oh. Sleepy time, gal. Sleepy time, gal is right. And your bankroll is growing again. You now have $110. Now, what do you want to try? Seventy. Well, you go ahead. <laughs> okay, let's say 70. 70, Old Devil Moon and How Are Things and Glockamora are two hit songs from what successful musical comedy? They're two song hits from what successful musical comedy? Played on Broadway for two years. You can talk it over, you know. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. It's Finian's Rainbow. Well, you now have $55. $55, and here's your last chance. I had to beat the other couples. Now, what do you want to try? Well, let's go for 80. 80. Okay. <laughs> Al Jolson and Vincent Roos wrote this longtime favorite. What is the name of it? Play, Jack. You stunt man. If you don't know, take a stab. Nothing? Nothing. Well, it's they play it every time you go to Catalina. It's Avalon. And you wind up with $27.50. Well, thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth deal. Sorry to <laughs>
Well, Groucho, we have a high school student from Fairfax High in Los Angeles. He's Henry Aaron. And his partner is a special guest. She's Mrs. Laura Asher. But I'll tell you what, let's see how long it takes you to find out her real identity. Folks, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Mr. Henry Aaron and Mrs. Laura Asher, eh? Uh, Mrs. Asher, I gather there's something about you Fenneman thinks I should know. I've got a pretty good idea already, but I'll give our listeners a chance to guess. Weren't you in the movies? Yes, about 20 years ago. Well, that's the time I was in it. <laughs> what are some of the pictures you were in? Oh, dear, I wonder if I can remember. Well, name ten. Well, <laughs> King Pretty of good. Jazz. I'm talking Paul about Whiteman. old times. That's right. And um, Finders, Keepers, Cat and the Canary. Oh, hmm. dozens of others. I don't remember. Henry, did you ever see Mrs. Asher in pictures? Well, if she made pictures 20 years ago, I don't think I could have seen her. I'm only 18. <laughs> Don't you watch television? <laughs> if you made movies 20 years ago, and my Hollywood arithmetic is correct, you must be pretty close to 34, is that right? Well, you're getting warm. Well, that's easy around you, huh? <laughs> well, you're just as lovely and charming as you were 20 years ago. Thank you. And the whole world knew you as Laura LaPlante. Well, Laura, you were a very big success in the movies. Why did you give up acting? Didn't you like the food in the studio commissary? Well, no, it wasn't that altogether. I, I got married, and, um, well, I've never been one of those people who can run two careers at once, and I decided that marriage was the more important. Well, that's a wonderful attitude. I'm sure many of our actresses in Hollywood feel the same way. <laughs> I know one actress who gave up acting eight times just to get married. <laughs> Your husband's a big producer at Paramount, isn't he? Well, I think he'd be very insulted to have you call him big. He's just taken off 25 pounds. <laughs> he looks like a leading man now. But he is a producer at Paramount Studios. Well, I see. Is he tall, your husband? About six feet. Mm -hmm. Can he hit hard? Oh, <laughs> he's never tried it on me. No, I was referring to me. <laughs> what picture is your husband producing now? Well, his last production was Elephant Walk with uh, Elizabeth Taylor and uh, Dana Andrews. It was a picture that was made in Ceylon. They took a whole troop of players over to Ceylon, worked there about two months. They use lots and lots of elephants in it, and it's, uh, the scenery is magnificent. I think scenery that most of us have never seen. Mm -hmm. I haven't even seen an elephant. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Elizabeth Taylor, does she ride on the top of the elephant? And uh, What do they call that? A howda? A hooda? <laughs> what do they is... call that? You're I don't student, know. Uh... <laughs> You're not much of a student, are you? <laughs> <laughs> what is your chief interest in school, uh, Henry? Well... I'm interested in a lot of things at Fairfax High. I guess I'm interested in athletics. I like to watch the sports and, I well... <laughs> that's, that's pretty tiring, isn't it? Well, sometimes it gets me down, but... Uh, the thing that I'm most interested in, I have been trying to help organize the debating team at our school for a couple of years, and... Nobody will talk? <laughs> the wrong people won't. Well, what would you like to be when you finish school, if you ever do? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd like to go into politics, as a matter of fact. I... You want to be a statesman? I think that would be a better name for it, probably. Well, there's quite a difference between a politician and a statesman. Yes, there is. A politician gets elected and a statesman gets defeated. <laughs> I mean, you want, what do you want to be? Uh, well, congressman, uh, alderman? Or? I, 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 I'm very interested in being in the Congress because I feel that there there's a real opportunity to do things, and there are certainly things that could, can be done. Oh, come now. <laughs> <laughs> Why, those boys are perfect. <laughs> well, I... Do you, you know they're only stuck with 200 million pounds of butter? <laughs> Is that all? <laughs> That was one of their big schemes a couple of years ago. <laughs> All I know is what I read in the paper. 
Gosh, he wins. <laughs> well, it's been an honor to talk with you, uh, Laura. You don't mind if I call Thank you Laura. Thank you. Huh? And you too, Henry. You don't mind if I call you <laughs> Laura, too. I wish I could continue this conversation, but the time has come to play you bet your life. In the race for the $2,500, the first couple won $27.50, and the secret word is house. Now, you, you both know how to play this game, huh? I would like to say, if I may, Groucho, well, that if, if, we're, may, um, yeah. if we're lucky enough to win something, I'd like to have my share go to the Motion Picture Relief Fund. Well, that's, that's very nice of you. <laughs> Unfortunately, they, this won't influence the quiz, I mean. But, uh, <laughs> however, it's, it's a commendable uh, objective, Laura, and uh, I'm proud of you. And I wish you weren't married. Now, let's see how much money you can <laughs> Let's see how much money you can make. You select the geography. And remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. We'd like to start with the $100 question. A $100 question? Yes. Why, you're as mad as Freddie <laughs> March's head. $100. Okay, what is the capital of Puerto Rico? Talk it over. Oh, I wish I was it's... home. <laughs> I don't. San Juan. San Juan is correct. <laughs> well, you're off to a fine start. Your bankroll is now $200. Now you have $200. Now right, what do you want to do? Well, do the 90? Uh, yeah. Come on down the okay. line. Okay. Okay, 90. 90. What country is known as the Pearl of the Antilles? Antilles, I guess. How is your Antilles, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's A-N-T-I-L-L-E-S. Pearl of the Antilles, we think it's Cuba. By Jove, it is Cuba. Yes. Oh. You now have two hundred and ninety dollars. You want to try the eighty? You can quit, question? you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have to proceed. Oh no, I have a good part. No, we're not gonna quit. <laughs> we'll try the eighty dollar question. Eighty dollars. The Suez Canal connects the Mediterranean Sea with what other sea? Talk it over. The Mediterranean, I believe, with the Pacific. I'm depending on you. The dear. Pacific Ocean. Think. Caribbean Audience? Sea. It's the Red Sea. Oh. I was thinking of the Panama Canal. <laughs> oh, well, you, uh, you, you lost it. half your bankroll. You, you still, still have $145. You have $145, and you can quit or go ahead. We'll try for the $70 question. All right. What is the name of the storm toss southernmost tip of South America? Tierra del Fuego. I hope it was right. <laughs> What did you say? Tierra del Fuego. <laughs> well, I've got uh, Cape Horn here, but you, apparently you know more about it than I do. <laughs> <laughs> and also the boys in the back here, <laughs> who conceive these questions. <laughs> That's good enough for me. Yeah. <laughs> and you wind up with a bank roll of $215. Big kiss. <laughs> Well, right. thanks, and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Thank you, Drop. <laughs> George, do your duty. Tell me who's next. All right, Groucho, just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected a fireman. His name is Cyril Bennett, and with him is a housewife, Mrs. Jacqueline uh, Reinerson. So, folks, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Mrs. Uh, Jacqueline uh, Reinerson, eh? And Mr. Okay. Sale Bennett. You're a fireman? Exactly. How's the pinochle game going? <laughs> <laughs> Jacqueline Reinerson, eh? Huh? That's you? You're a very attractive Jacqueline. May I call you Jackie Jacqueline? You may. Everyone does. Everyone does. Where are you from, Jack? Oh, I was born in Paris, France. In Paris, France? Mm -hmm. My oh. mother was a war bride in the First World War. Is that so? Mm -hmm. Do you polyvoo? Well, oh, I do, but I'm a little rusty. <laughs> Have you tried getting oiled once in a while? <laughs> How'd you meet your husband? Uh, your husband. Uh, Would you say it was love at first sight? Well, that just depends on how you define love. Well, the definition for love is fairly simple. It's it's an itching that you can't scratch. <laughs> Can you ever hear the seven-year itch? How would you define love, uh, Jack? Well, I feel that um, it's a combination of things, and, um, physical as well as the mental attraction. But uh, 
I do think the most important thing is that uh, people feel the same about basic principles, things that involve integrity, honor, and uh, consideration, courtesy. Not to love, huh? I think so. Well, I guess it is. I guess that's why so many people marry for money. Huh? <laughs> I'm just an old cynic, that's all. So let's get down to some facts about your job as a fireman. For example, how many fires do you attend in a day? I don't go to any fires. <laughs> it's not a very hot fireman, I must say. What's the matter? Don't you like to smash furniture? <laughs> Why don't you go to fires? Well, I'm at the fire department alarm board. That's the uh, communication center for the fire department. Well, were you uh, formerly uh, just a regular fireman? Yes, sir. I was a fireman for many years. Mm -hmm. Well, when you get a call, how long does it take for a fire truck to respond? Uh, do they get there the same day? <laughs> <laughs> well, when a fireman receives an uh, alarm, he jumps out of bed, slides the pole, and is on the uh, truck within ten seconds. And five seconds later, he's back upstairs trying to find his trousers. <laughs> Well, Jackie, let's get back to you. I've discovered after seven years on this seat here that every housewife has outside interests. Uh, what is yours? Well, for the past 18 months, I've been doing everything I can to help Lakewood become a city. Lakewood? You Lakewood. You mean there's local Lakewood out there? That's mm -hmm. a pretty big job. How many children do you have so far? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> How do you explain this away? Well, about 18 months ago, there was a move to uh, annex Lakewood to Long Beach. And uh, many of us in the community felt that we were 60,000 young people, intelligent. There certainly should be enough leadership in our community so that we could have local self-government. So we decided to do it, and we did. It sounds like an unusual place, Lakewood. It is. What would you say is your biggest asset there? Well, I would say our children are. Mm -hmm. We have uh, 35,000 children who's... Uh, Average age is under six. You have 35,000 children and a total population of 60,000? That's right. And you say Long Beach wanted to annex your town? Mm -hmm. Well, you just keep having children at that rate, and I predict in four more years, Lakewood will not only annex Long Beach, it'll engulf the whole of Southern California. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been very interesting talking to you two, and I wish both of you the best of luck in the future. Now, let's play You Bet Your Life. In the race for the $2,500, the high school student and Laura LaPlante are leading with $215. Let's see how much money you can make. You select a general information quiz, and remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. All right. Seven. Seventy. In mathematics, what do you call the figure three decimal point 1416? Three decimal point 1416. Pi. That's right. What kind, you know? <laughs> Well, pie is right. You now have $170 in your bankroll. What do you want to try? Six. Sixty? What, what do you call a fatal spot in the desert? An oasis. Mm -hmm. That's true. An oasis. Is... You now have $230. You can quit or proceed. Five. We'll go ahead. Fifty? Mm -hmm. What do you call the track left by a ship passing through the water? Wake. Wake. That's right. You now have $280. You can quit or go ahead. Forty. 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 What do you call the complete outfit for a newborn infant? You Lay ought to know that. Layette. Layette is absolutely correct. And you wind up with $320. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. And that means that Mrs. Ryerson and the firemen with $320 in just one minute get the chance of the DeSoto Plymouth $2,500 question. <laughs> Friends, the time is now. Hold on there, Fenneman. What do you mean the time is now? Well, Groucho, now is the time to visit your DeSoto Plymouth dealer if you're interested in buying a good used car at the lowest price and on easy terms. Because this is the time of year, your DeSoto Plymouth dealer can really offer you real savings on used cars. The reason is, 
He now has a fine, full selection of all makes and models in a wide price range. Many are one-owner, low-mileage DeSotos and Plymouths that the dealer has serviced regularly from the day they were new. As long as you've gone that far, George, you might as well tell them about the TV sticker. All right. Look for the TV sticker on the windshields of your DeSoto Plymouth dealer's used cars. It stands for top value. Your DeSoto Plymouth dealer is the only place in town where you can get top value used cars. There's one other thing I want to point out. Your DeSoto Plymouth dealer plans to be in business in your community for a long, long time. He needs your goodwill and confidence. That's why you can be sure of an honest, fair deal. Remember, the time is now. First thing tomorrow, visit your DeSoto Plymouth dealer for the finest used cars at the lowest possible prices on the easiest terms available. And here comes the winning couple crowd show, all set for the DeSoto Plymouth $2,500 question. All right, here we go for $2,500. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully, and please no help in the audience. Here it is. Only one denomination of United States currency has a picture of the White House on the back of it. For $2,500, which bill is it? Talk it over. You have 15 seconds. All right, what, what's the answer you two have decided upon? The dollar bill. No, I'm sorry, it's the $20 no. bill. <laughs> so that means the big question next week will be worth $3,000. Well, you lost the big money, but how much they win the quiz? Uh, $320 in That's the quiz. not too bad. Congratulations and thanks to both of you and to all of our contestants on the show tonight. Thank you very much. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at the same time for the Groucho Marx Show, when the big question will be worth $3,000. And don't miss Groucho's television show, also brought to you by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember that the dealers who sell the outstanding DeSoto Automatic with fully automatic power flight transmission also have on display the remarkable new Plymouth, engineered and built to be your best buy in the low-priced field. DeSoto, Plymouth. Two great new cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks, and remember, just be sure to see the DeSoto Automatic. Friends, adult and child victims of cerebral palsy can become useful, productive citizens in your community. Send your contribution to your nearest cerebral palsy chapter to help pay for the needed treatment and research. You Bet Your Life, transcribed from Hollywood, is produced by John Goodell. Directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jack Meekin. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. You Bet Your Life is heard by our armed forces throughout the world. so many Greeks are good restaurant operators? Is it just a coincidence? Or because well, they happen to be experts on Greece. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, Groucho is like this. That's an old joke, uh, you know. Every Greek boy is born with a spottle and a spoon on his hand. A spottle? What kind? A whiskey spottle? No. <laughs> it's the one that you stir a stew or a soup or oh. anything that you want to make in a deep casserole. Well, let's talk about your place, Pete. Uh, where is it? Well, uh, my place is located at 701 East Ocean Boulevard in Long Beach. No. Oh. The Seafood Grotto. And if you really want to enjoy the finest seafood, you better come down or call Long Beach 76748, <laughs> and you'll have the finest seafood you ever had any place. 
Well, I'll, I'll give you a ring. Suppose a halibut uh, answers. Do I hang up? <laughs> How do you feel about uh, seafood, Tommy? I don't like it. Fish tastes too much like fish. Fine partner, I have. <laughs> <laughs> Why I choose you? <laughs> well, my advice is, after that, don't eat at Pete's place, huh? You're liable to get a Mickey in your mackerel. <laughs> Well, you're a very entertaining couple, and it's been real nice talking to you two, and now let's play your bet your life. In the race for the $1,000, the first couple won $250, and the secret word is people. Now, let's see how much money you can make. You select the sports. And remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. What do you want to start with? That's about $50. $50. That's a nice compromise. What do you call the last runner on a relay team? Talk That's it over. the yeah. anchor man. Yeah, you're right. It's the anchor man. But in the future, you give me one answer. she may have a different version. Wonderful. Yeah, Pete, and you, you're a pretty uh, smart cookie there, huh? You now have $150. Now, uh, what question do you want, Pete? Mm -hmm. Let me have it. Well, you can have an 80, a 10, a 100, 30, anything 60. Else? Let's advance it 10 more. Okay. That all right with you, Tom? That's you got that all right, right Tommy? That's what do you call the area a football player aims for when he tries to kick the ball out of bounds near the goal line? <laughs> one answer now. Oh, no. That's a coffin corner. That is right. It's a coffin corner. Your bankroll is now $210. Now, you can quit or you can go ahead. Let's take a chance. What do you want? What question? Uh, $70. $70. $70. What do you call the basic rules and provisions of modern boxing? The rules of, uh, uh, Lugsbury rules. It's something of that type. The Queensberry Rules. That's right, the Queensberry Rules. <laughs> the markers of Queensberry Rules. Well, you were That's fighting right. with it. We had to give it to you. And you now have $280. Are you a gambler? Well, let's gamble on it. Okay. Big one or a little one? 80. Let's have $80. $80. How many players on an ice hockey team? On an ice hockey team? Five. No. Six. Six. Too bad. Well, you've lost half your bankroll. You wind up with $140. Well, thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth Deal. Sorry you didn't win. Thank you. Who's next, George? Well, Roger, we have a housewife and a married man for you. They volunteered just before we went on the air. Mrs. Capitola Fredrickson and Mr. John Blake. Would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx? Welcome, folks, for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealer. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. You're a John Blake, eh? It's yes, spelled J-O-N. Why yeah. is that? Did somebody knock the H out of you? Uh, no, Groucho. It's just a contraction of the early English Jonathan. Oh, I see. Uh, where are you from, uh, Jonathan? The Washington Heights uh, section of New York City. Oh, really? I used to live up there. Mm -hmm. 165th Street and uh, Amsterdam, man. Around there. Mm -hmm. How old are you? It was about 100 years ago. I'm 27, Groucho. 27. Mm -hmm. Well, you're a fine-looking lad. Mrs. Uh, How did we get started? I started it. <laughs> well, congratulations. Thank you. Finally found somebody who was crookeder than I was. <laughs> well, Vegas is certainly a fabulous place. Are there any more little traditions like that one about throwing the coins in the water? Well, there's a, uh, a rumor going around the Flamingo now that uh, if you come down to the health club and get a rub... You give the boy a silver dollar to rub your arm, you'll have a... That's you, huh? Well, that's right. <laughs> well, Mr. Wallace, I hope you won't be offended by this, but my guess is you're about as straightforward and honest as a Las Vegas slot machine. <laughs> well, you make an interesting and attractive couple, and I'd like to go on talking to you, but now it's time to play You Bet Your Life. You st we start you off with a $100 bankroll. This is right up your alley, isn't it? Mm -hmm. right? Which you try to build as high as possible. Each time you miss a question, you lose half of what you have. You can quit whenever you like. Is that clear? Yeah. Okay, let's see how much money you can make. You selected music. And remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Fifty. Fifty. Okay, uh, $50. What musical instrument does Vladimir Horowitz play? Talk it over. Your partners. And if you don't know, guess. Do you have any idea? Yeah. Take a guess. Violin? No, you're close. It's a piano. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's pretty close. They're next to each other in the audience. <laughs> well, you lost half your bankroll. You still have $50. Now, what do you want to try? 
60, 80, 10? Okay, whatever you say. Forty dollars. Forty dollars. A few years ago, a famous clarinetist had such men in his band as Gene Krupa, Harry James, and Lionel Hampton. He was known as the King of Swing. Who is he? Artie Goodman. Mm-hmm. One answer. Mm-hmm. I guess you're right. Go ahead. I think it was Benny Goodman. Oh, you just nose under the wire. <laughs> That's right. Huh? Well, you now have ninety dollars. Chucky, maybe you better let her in. Yeah, I, uh, I think you're right there, Ralph. This girl goes to UCLA. Now uh-huh. you have ninety dollars. Now what do you want to try? Seventy. Well, okay. Seventy dollars. Seventy. The orchestra will play a familiar song. You tell me the name of it. Play, Mr. Meekin. <laughs> You're now climb to one hundred and sixty dollars. Should we try the ninety? The ninety is right off the boat. We just got it in today. Good. <laughs> Good. Try the ninety. 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 Wow. The orchestra will play a song by Cole Porter. You identify it, Jack. Just one of those things. Just one of yeah. Those things. What is just it? one of those things. That's right. Once again. Just one of those things. That makes three of those things. That's right. <laughs> And you wind up with two hundred and fifty dollars. Well, thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And I Thank hope you're very happy. Right George, it's time for a commercial. Not just any commercial, but the one about that beautiful, tremendous new DeSoto Coronado. So say something. Well, I don't have to, Groucho, because this car speaks for itself. It's a real honey, sleek, glamorous, and new. The DeSoto Coronado is a 170-horsepower beauty with a Sierra beige top and a Caddy's blue body that's just the greatest. And the Coronado's got a new chrome and stainless steel setup that makes it look even longer and lower, if that's possible. Yes, this Coronado is a real work of art. And to prove it, we've put the name on the rear fender in shiny chrome. Up front is the famous Fire Dome name, proof that the Coronado offers the same unbeatable performance as all the other DeSoto automatics. Inside, this car is like nothing you've ever seen. It's so beautiful. The cream seat bolsters are the finest top-grain leathers, a perfect blend with the pale blue of the weave pattern corded nylon upholstery. George, that car is so lovely. I wonder if it's doing anything after the show. Well, Groucho, I hope it has a date. A date with a lot of those nice people out there. A date at their DeSoto Plymouth dealer showroom to see for themselves that the beautiful DeSoto Coronado is another proof that DeSoto puts you ahead. Automatically. Remember the dealer who sells the stunning DeSoto Automatic. Also sells the High Style Plymouth. George, let's have the next couple. Who are they? We have some people with interesting stories, Groucho. Mrs. Tommy Lewis and Mr. Peter George Stathis. Would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx? Welcome, folks, for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Mr. Peter George Stathis and Mrs. Tommy Lewis. Mrs. Lewis, you're a woman. I'll start with you. What's your first name? Tommy. Tommy? Okay. Is that a man's name? Nothing to start with I.E. Really? I didn't know that. Next time I see somebody with an I.E., I'll make sure and tip my hat. <laughs> Where are you from, Tommy? Huh? <laughs> I'm originally from Pasco, Washington. Where? Pasco, Washington. Pasco, Washington? That's mm-hmm. in the Apple Country, isn't it? Near there, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was up there once, but they threw me out. They figured one bad apple could wreck the entire industry. <laughs> Are you married, Tommy? Yes, I'm married. Where did you meet your husband? I met my husband, Douglas Aircraft. Douglas Aircraft? That's right. What were you doing there? I was a riveter, and he was a tool crib attendant. You were Rosie the Riveter. Huh? No, I was Tommy the Riveter. <laughs> well, Rosie is I.E., isn't it? Yes. That's right. <laughs> we're back to the I.E. again. <laughs> What was he doing in the tool crib? Was he just a baby at the time? Or? No, he was the attendant. He uh, gave out the motors and guns and, and the uh, equipment to work with. The, the employees had to go to the tool crib and get the equipment to work with. Well, we seldom have an opportunity to explore romance in the riveting section. <laughs> and I always like to do research on any subject. Uh, how did your husband break the ice the first time he saw you? He did. not I did. Mm-hmm. Uh, he rushed, I rushed up to the tool crib and I asked him if he had a high-speed motor with a loose chuck. <laughs> He said he had the motor. You're lucky he didn't call a policeman, huh? Yeah, I think so. What is a high-speed motor with a loose chuck? Well, a high-speed motor is a 1,500 uh, RPM motor, 
And uh, it's revolutions for men, isn't it? Yes. And it's... Uh, it's what uh, they're having in Puerto Rico. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, a loose chuck is when you spin down to fit the, the, the um, drill with your fingers instead of taking your chuck and keep the key and keep turning it like this by hand and mm-hmm. making your arm tired. So I wonder how to be more with a loose chuck. <laughs> and, uh, well, is that how they make chuck steak? Do they shoot at it with a gun? <laughs> no, I think that's a different subject. That ends with I.E. too, you know. Oh. Chucky. Yeah. Okay. I thought we were, we were past that deal now. We may never get past that. Oh. <laughs> Your name is Peter George Status? Yes, Gracho. Well, you're a very cute-looking uh, George Status. Well, thank you. I didn't mean to uh, ignore you for such a long... I was of... wondering. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't really ignoring you. I was merely occupied with a ricochet romance. Or... <laughs> Can you sing that song, uh, Tommy? No, but I don't sing. I play on the black notes and play on the white notes, but I always sing in the track. <laughs> Well, I have no answer for that. No. <laughs> what, what sort of work do you do, Peter? I'm a restaurateur. Uh, a restaurateur, huh? Yes, sir. Really? I've been arrested many a time. Do <laughs> you have frog's legs? Yes, sir. Let's see them, huh? Uh, <laughs> that would be. <laughs> well, Pete, you look like you're a pretty good advertisement for your place. What are your measurements, by the way? Well, I measure five, in, uh, five feet five inches, and I weigh two hundred and ten pounds. Is that strip for Jim? Yes, sir. Well, you're a fine figure of a man, Pete. Thank you. My advice is to stay out of dark alleys. <laughs> You'd certainly be an easy man to roll. <laughs> Where are you from, Peter? Capitola, Fredrickson, eh? Fredrickson? Fredrickson. That's you. Uh, where are you from, uh, well, I was born on an Indian reservation in Red Lake, Minnesota. Oh, really? Yes, sir. You're not wearing your feathers tonight, huh? Mm-hmm. What tribe are you from? I'm from the Chippewa tribe. Chippewa? Yes. Is that your Indian name, Capitola? No, that isn't an Indian name, Groucho. My Indian name is Celine Janat Ozawandib Dabusanakudo Kinu. I don't know, but I'd be willing to try. <laughs> Well, what does your name mean in English? You fish on your side, I fish on my side, nobody fish in the middle? <laughs> no. It means a girl with the dark brown hair flowing outwards under low clouds with a little eagle. <laughs> it's not easy, either. <laughs> what sort of work does your husband do, Capitola? Oh, he works in the post office, Groucho. Oh, does he ever play post office with you? Uh... Well, sometimes. <laughs> what does he do in the post office? Well, he calls himself a post office, I mean, a... Um, Postmaster? No, post office mortician. <laughs> he Why? Works in, well, he works in the dead letter department. <laughs> That's his little joke, huh? Yes. And while he's clowning around the post office, the mail-order electric belt I sent for to give me the strength of Hercules is rotting in the basement. <laughs> Come to cut out those jokes. Where did you meet your husband? Well, he came up to Minnesota on a duck hunting trip one time, and he lost his hunting license. So he... You were a decoy? No. (laughs) Well, I was in an Indian pageant at that time, so he spent his evenings watching this pageant and flirting with me and saying fancy things. Like what? Oh, how you doing, kid? What you doing tonight? How about a date? And he didn't think I could understand English because I was in Indian costume all the time. When did he finally find out you understood every word he said? When he asked me to marry him, I fooled him, and I said yes. <laughs> That's one question a woman can understand in 68 different languages. <laughs> By the way, have you taught your husband how to speak Chippewa? Well, um, a short time after we were married, I told him, Honey, I'll bet I can make you talk Indian. Talk in two minutes. And right after that, he declared war on them. Uh, <laughs> he said, how? I said, see, I made you talk Indian already. <laughs> you certainly have a variety of little jokes in your family. <laughs> you know, I was up in Montana last summer, at the <clears throat> Blackfeet uh, Reservation up there. I was up there. They were shooting a Western picture, some friends of mine, and I went up to watch them. 
at this big museum up there, this Indian museum, and I went in, of course, I had my little guy with me, and we, I was interested, and she was, and we went there, and there were, oh, there was a couple of dozen Indians in there looking at this exhibit, this Indian exhibit. Mm-hmm. They had moccasins there, and a canoe, and uh, all kinds of blankets, and uh, things that they carry, the papooses, and, and these Indians were standing there, and they were fascinated by this stuff. Most of them had never seen any of these things. <laughs> and I, saw, I had been in a Western picture with a lot of Indians in one of our movies, and I was explaining to the Indians what all these things were for. The <laughs> incongruity to have me standing there from New York City explaining to the Indians about their own paraphernalia. There's no joke to this, but I thought it was a kind of an interesting piece of Americana. Now, John, occasionally I like to sound people out on their hobbies. Do you have any uh, particular ones that we could discuss? Uh, yes, I do, Groucho, well, but... What do you uh, do? What is it? I paint with salt and pepper. You paint with... Uh, what do you mean you paint with salt? What do you paint? Steaks? <laughs> uh, no, Groucho. I paint uh, portraits of uh, pretty girls, landscapes, and so forth. Mm. You know. Now, this is modern art. You have to take it with a grain of salt. I <laughs> have you sold any of these salt and pepper pictures? Yes, quite a number, Groucho. As a matter of fact, uh, a few of them are in some of the finest bars in Hollywood. <laughs> well, so have I been, but I can't paint. Huh? <laughs> well, how much you get? Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is people. P-E-O-P-L-E. Really? You bet your life! It's Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, a comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood and brought to you with more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers. The dealers who have on display the outstanding DeSoto Automatic with fully automatic power flight transmission and the all-new Plymouth, your best buy in the low-priced field. And now, here he is, the one, the only... That's me. Well, here I am again with $1,000 for one of our couples. We have some young single people for you tonight, Roger. For me? Well, uh, for you to talk to. Oh. Uh, Miss Virginia Harbin and Mr. Chuck Wallace. So, folks, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Well, welcome, youngsters, for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day, I presume. Virginia Harbin, that's you, huh? That's right. Are you uh, married? No, I'm not, Groucho. Are you engaged? No, I'm not. Are you over 21? Yes, I am. Chuck Wallace? That's correct, sir. Oh, how old are you, Chucky boy? I'm 31, Groucho. 31? Well, say, you're a pretty young-looking kid for 31. How tall are you, Chuck? Five foot six. Mm-hmm. That must be why they call you Chuck, eh? Because you're short for Charles? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Virginia, let's get back to you. What, what sort of work do you do? I'm an employment interviewer at the Bureau of Occupations at UCLA. Oh. What do you, what do, you do at this place? I try to find work for college students. Uh-huh. We try to match the employer's request with the um, student's request as to the type of jobs that they're particularly interested in doing. That doesn't seem uh, plausible. Right? <laughs> I does. never heard of a college student that was interested in work. <laughs> <laughs> How about salary? I should imagine college students are pretty practical. What do they want to start with? 50000 a year and free parking? No, I, I don't think so, Groucho. I think that they're really more interested in the job and the opportunities that the job has to offer more so than uh, than the salary. Is that so? In other words, you don't think they're interested in money? And you expect an employer to hire a netwit like that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that they, they really are interested in the money, but I think, too, that they're interested in the opportunities that the to job meet the has to offer. the and, uh, yes. and the other people who work in the office, the I male think, ones, I mean. I think so. Where do you work, Chuck? I work at the Flamingo Hotel in Las Vegas. Oh, you work in Vegas, huh? Yeah, right. No wonder you're short. <laughs> <laughs> I go up there occasionally. I've stayed at the Flamingo, and last time I was there, I stayed at the Desert Inn. They have a golf course there. What is your job at the Flamingo? Are you the little fellow under the roulette wheel that makes it stop in the wrong number? <laughs> no, I'm the masseur there. Gotcha. Masseur? Oh, you're a Frenchman. Well, uh, good evening, monsieur. <laughs> Sure. What do you do in this place, uh, monsieur? Well, I give the steam bath, the rubs, and the oxygen there. You give the oxygen? Is That's this right. after they play or before? <laughs> 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 well, 
Well, have you always been a masseur up there? No, I was a lifeguard before that. Gotcha. That's kind of a strange job in Vegas, isn't it? When a man jumps in the pool up there, the last thing he wants to be is saved. <laughs> Is it pretty? Is it a pretty hard work, Chuck? Uh, no, it's uh, fun. The lifeguard. Yeah, that's right. In fact, uh, you dive after pennies like they do in Hawaii. Well, in a way, yes. There was a rumor going around the hotel that there uh, were a number of them when I was there. <laughs> <laughs> they finally threw me out of the hotel. Well, anyway, there. This rumor was that uh, if anyone would throw a silver dollar into the pool before they'd uh, go into the tables, or well, they'd have good luck that night. And, uh, How does a rumor like 